Come on, Marco, fuck him. Yeehaw, it's bull ranging time. <laughs> I gotta get the bag. Let's go. Do you like me? <laughs> yes. We are back. We're here. What is up, everyone? Let me turn these sound effects down. Hope you guys... Whoa, Kylie W already early, early joining the joining the cult. We love to see that. Yes, I like how it's starting off already. I like that. I like that. Welcome, Kylie. Welcome to the cult. Welcome to all you guys. 68 people watching already. Thumbs up the team. You already know the drill. Oh, uh, man. I love seeing the chat with so much green in it. Appreciate all you guys for being here. I see a lot of people, Alex FPV, Eliza, Bo uh, Rob Ross, Connor, Susie, Bad Dog. It's too many people to name. It'd be too many people to name these days, and that's a good problem to be having. Okay, first things first. Before I get into it, I would like to let you guys know one thing, okay? And this is an important update. I am constantly being asked, and I, I don't blame y'all because I'm talking about it and teasing it, uh, about this new video this big video that I've been working on since January. I've had, without a doubt, the most productive week uh, regarding that video since I started it this past week. However, what up, Tretino? Um, what I do have to let you God guys... Did. Holy Just shit, trying to be that Marco scared me. And of course, Eliza for Mod. Eliza for Mod, wow. Starting off nice. We're starting off nicely, and I like it. I really do. This is Cult Loyalty 101. Also, don't interrupt. Also, don't interrupt. Uh, okay, so regarding that video that I'm working on, I have to delay it a little, a little bit longer. A little bit longer. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. The reason why I have to delay it a little bit longer is because... What up, Julie? Glad you're here. The reason I have to delay it a little bit longer is because I, I, I do believe I'm going to be sued when I put this video out. And I need some time to get my ducks in a row, legally speaking. I have some reading materials that I need to complete. I, for example, bought a book about representing yourself in court. And uh, I'm working through that right now because that's probably the route that I will take to, uh, if I get sued, because let's be real, I'm going to be sued uh, more than more than a few times if I, if I keep pursuing this anti-MLM stuff as my career, which I am. And uh, I also will still have to hire a lawyer, even if it's just in a limited capacity, uh, meaning I would do most of the work and I would just have a lawyer there who would, uh, I would retain to answer questions and look over my you know, documents, make sure I'm filing things correctly, give me general advice, etc. But even that is still gonna cost me a couple grand. And so, uh, Time to prepare and time to make some more bag. I need to make some more money before I, uh, you know, go down that road. Because like I said, I, I'm, I'm so confident I'm going to be sued. I can't even, uh, that's, just the, that's just the fact of it. I should probably also post here in the Discord that I'm live. At everyone, I am live. There we go. Because sometimes the notifications for YouTube don't go through, so I figure I'll post it in Discord. So, yeah, building up that war chest, Nightwing, you got it. And, um, you know, Danny, what up? D wow, disappointed. Me having been gone for months has nothing to do with it. Got you. Well, Danny, I hope you're well. Glad to see you back. Hell yeah. Appreciate you guys as well, and thank you, Alex. Thank you, Kylie, for joining the cult, and thank you, Alex, for the big bag right out, right out the gate. Okay, so, um, not sovereign citizen, no, just, uh, just representing yourself in court without having to spend tens of thousands on a lawyer because that's what they would do if they sued me. They would just keep 
using every legal maneuvering to delay it, delay it, delay it, so that I would keep, I would have to keep spending money and my, my stack of chips would run out before theirs. So what I want to show you today is this channel that I came across recently, which is absolutely, honestly, just mind boggling. This channel is called, switch over to it. This channel is called MLM for CEOs. Okay. They have, if I go to their, um, tab here with all their videos on it, um, it says they have 162 videos. I think this includes live streams, but not shorts. Not trying to interrupt you again, but <laughs> Eliza from Odd. We're working on it. Hey, Eliza and everyone who's campaigning to, for Eliza to be a mod, I just need to let you guys know. I, you know, I have, I hold very little power when it comes to that. It's not like I can just click a button and make it happen. You know, like there's a, it's very political. There's a big process. I have to run it by the council of elders. Um, there has to be, you know, and you got to understand too, there have been, there are people who have that blue wrench by their name in the chat who have been driven to madness and insanity in their pursuit of the blue wrench. Okay. And, uh, you know, people have killed for those wrenches. People have sacrificed, uh, animals, relatives, you know, like human beings, uh, in, in the pursuit of that ranch to get that ranch people. Some of these people have been, you know, supporting since, since 2018, 2019, supporting the boy, you know? So I have to be conscious of that and we have to, uh, you know, it's, it's not a light, it's not a light thing to do. I just need you to know that. And also if I open the floodgates to giving Eliza a mod ship and it wasn't like a big, you know, it didn't take a lot to get it. Well, then everybody, everybody would just be, you know, me for, let me have one next. Let me have one next. And so, you know, I, I have, yeah, it is a tool scam literally because it's a wrench. But uh, Alex FPV says, yeah, Council of Elders only meets on the new moon. Exactly. There's rituals to it where it's sort of like, you know, if the, if the weather conditions aren't right, then just purely based on cult policy, we can't have the meeting uh, based on certain weather conditions. If the date of the meeting is an odd number, we can't do it. Uh, there's a whole litany of, of things that have to, you know, things that have to line up in order for us to be able to do it. And then that's just to get in the same room. And then we have to actually talk. Okay, Eliza, let's look at her bag history. Let's look at her, you know, how she'd be riding for the cult. You know, who has she killed? Things like that. So it's very, uh, it's very, you know, it's a very long process. So I appreciate y'all's patience. Um, send the list. All right. So I want to go through this. Um, I, I want to go through this. This. <laughs> just honor the process, guys. I want to look at this channel. So this channel is called MLM for CEOs, and it is literally a tutorial channel uh, for how to run an MLM company. It's absolutely bizarre. Like I, I really hope somebody downloads the entire library of these videos. If one of you wants to take it upon yourself to download even just the most popular of these videos or the most noteworthy, I, I think it will be historically a, a, an absolutely like relevant historical uh, thing to look at. Because what we are seeing with this man's channel in my opinion, is tutorial a, a tutorial on how to run a scam under the guise of a legitimate business. This is, yeah, we're, and we're gonna look at some of the things. First off, one of one of the main video when you get to the you know landing page of the channel here, uh, this is sort of like an introduction to the channel. And just in this video, there is so many red flags that should point to. Uh, the understanding that this is not a, uh, a business. It is a scam. So let's check this out. Uh, X Gonzalez, thank you for being a member for three months at regional director. Uh, can I get a newt newt? Sure you can. Where is that at? Congratulations. I looked at my bag history today. It's up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Michael's sounding like a politician. He's learned from his MLM research. Yeah, so true. Yes, X Gonzalez, welcome back, welcome back. No, nobody's doing anything to end Paz. Appreciate you, Jay Soulmatic, all you guys. They have to make stone circles. Yeah, you guys, you see, some of y'all get it. Some of y'all get it. You can't just buy your way into the mod ship. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? You think this is the U.S. Congress and y'all are the MLM industry just throwing money at it so you can have your way lobbying? No, you can't just lobby me. I mean, you could, but it would cost a lot of bag. It would, it would cost a lot of bag. Where's the... I got to get the bag. Exactly. So... It is too smoky in Edmonton, says Jared, for the council meeting. This is actually true. It is uh, very smoky outside the, the forest fires or the, the whatever fires. There's fires. Yeah. It, you could buy your way to becoming a mod, Kylie, but it's, it's sort of like Scientology. Like, there's no specific number. It's like, just keep, you know, stick with it. Trust me. Have faith. Trust the process. All right. But yeah, everything does have a price. Lucy and Voldemorty, real goons carry wrenches, say less. Exactly. See, they they understand. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy Tunes Voldemorty. Uh, Marco, do we think there's any danger in you, a big YouTube channel, shedding more light on how to MLM a small YouTube channel? There could be, but I think awareness is the uh, knife that needs sharpening at this point in history. But I appreciate your concern. All right, it's a process. Yeah. Um, thank you, Catherine. Catherine joining the cult. Yes. At executive team leader. Eliza Super PAC. Hilarious. Okay. By the way, good news though, on, on the outline, the silver lining of me saying that I'm delaying that big video is that I have other videos that I'm going to be putting out ahead of when I originally planned to. I originally planned to drop this big one. And then I have a bunch of other videos, some of which I've been sitting on that I'm gonna put out. One of those videos is the interview that I shot with the lawyer Douglas Brooks back in March when we were both in Washington DC for the MLM conference. That interview, like that was uh, honestly the most expensive part of my entire trip because I was trying to figure out, you guys remember me talking about this on stream a few months ago. I was like, how am I going to shoot this interview? Am I gonna go rent gear when I get there? And, or am I going to bring gear there and like, you know, try to transport it? Ultimately, I decided the wisest thing to do in terms of logistics would just be to hire a videographer who was local to the area, which I did, but that came at the cost of money. And uh, I have to shout out uh, Jeffrey at J Perk Productions. If you are in Washington or the Washington area, um, holla at him because he was an absolute professional and the footage came out amazing. And that interview is, um, that interview is over an hour long. So you guys are going to get that. Plus, of course, I'm going to be dropping like vertical, you know, a bunch of vertical clips from it that are under, under a minute long so that you can really, you know, whatever. Uh, I have that video. I have the video where um, I talk about confronting an Amway recruiter and I play the audio that I recorded of me, like of our conversation where I confronted her. And then I also have a video where, uh, I, this video is more of a guide for people to refer to and send to others. It, it's a video basically explaining what is a pyramid scheme, because there's still a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation out there about pyramid schemes. A lot of people still incorrectly believe that a pyramid scheme doesn't have a product. This is something that multi-level marketing recruiters far and wide repeat uh, ad nauseum. They repeat this. You know, do you even know what you're talking about? A pyramid scheme, first of all, pyramid schemes are illegal, okay? And we're very regulated, we're licensed. We could never be a pyramid scheme. Also, pyramid schemes don't have a product, guys. This is the shit they say, and it's not true. More than 30 companies have been shut down for being a pyramid scheme. Every single one of them had products. Look no further than Vima. I, I always use Vima as an example because Vima was like the first uh, MLM that really got uh, caught on on social media in the, in the you know, early and mid 2010s with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, obviously that's thanks to, in large part, thanks to Alex Morton, who has gone on to join several other MLMs since. 
Tonight is a new moon. The elders have to gather tonight and discuss. Thank you, Eliza. Uh, Eliza, it is a new moon tonight. However, it's also the 19th, and 19 is an odd number, so we can't do it. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, but, uh, you know, it's not happening tonight, I'll tell you that much. Maybe tomorrow, but at tomorrow, you know, depends also. There's, there's so many things, so many variables, you know. So, yes, every MLM has had products, uh, and, sorry, every company that was classified as being a pyramid scheme had products. So this is a complete mistruth. So I'm going to be doing a video where I explain what is a Ponzi scheme. Many people do understand what this is. Bernie Madoff, Charles Ponzi, many people know. And then how do you explain what a pyramid scheme is? Well, a pyramid scheme is a more sophisticated Ponzi scheme whereby the scam is covered up or disguised using some distribution method or some product. And then... But Mercury is in retrograde. <laughs> Hashtag Elizaphor mod. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I mean, you guys are campaigning, and I honestly do respect the drive to get Eliza to be a mod. And def listen, you can't see the camera is this way, so you can't see the rest of my uh, my little lounge room here. But all my, uh, you know, some of my high council members and assistants are taking notes, and they have graphs pulled up, and they're doing a whole bunch of you know, intense, intense calculation to figure out um, if Eliza can be mod. We're, we're doing, trust me, there's many data points that have to be cross-referenced and, you know, we have to do background checks and it's, it's a big process. So just, you know, stick with the process and be patient and, you know, trust, ha have faith in the process, you know. Um, so yeah, pyramid scheme, more sophisticated Ponzi scheme where you hide what's really going on uh, with a product. Well, then how's that different from an MLM? That's what the video is going to try to explain. I'm going to try to make it clear and understandable and digestible for the layman that a pyramid scheme is a Ponzi scheme in disguise and an MLM is a pyramid scheme. Thus, an MLM is a Ponzi scheme in disguise. An MLM is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. And... Uh, Look, no, that's a perfect segue to get into this gentleman, Richard Sletcher's content here. Let's see his intro to the channel. Let's just watch this. Okay, and I think we're live. Good day and welcome to MLM for CEOs. Today, as you can see, my partner Stuart is not here. He's decided to take the day off, the rascal. So I'm here to just talk to you a little bit about MLM for CEOs, what we you do. You also forgot that when the 19th new moon falls on a stream day, it's an automatic mod for Eliza. Ah, see, that's another thing, Eliza. Actually, that's wrong. But uh, It can't be a stream day. That's another thing. Actually, it can be a stream day, but that depends on the weather. And like I said, it's very overcast. It's very smoky. You can't even see the sky. So, you know, belay that. You, how we do it, you'll know from previous podcasts that we... He always starts by saying, welcome to MLM for CEOs, the business or the organizations that's geared towards providing information to the CEOs of companies. So I've been in the industry for a number of years and what I've noticed over the years is that there are a lot of people who want to get into multi-level marketing and use multi-level marketing as a route to market for their products, but who do not understand the MLM industry. Now, a couple of things happen. Eth this is the first, I'm gonna stop as we go. First thing that is wrong with this uh, gentleman's intro here, we're in the first minute. He says, there are people, there are many people who are looking to use multi-level marketing as a way of marketing their products. So what he's implying here is that the goal is to sell products, meaning direct sales. And as I went over, you know, as I explained, uh, I think well in my MLM conference speech back in March, and as I have repeated, in videos and many times on live stream, multi-level marketing is not direct selling and even direct selling does not exist anymore. It is so rare, it is so rare. Direct selling makes up less than 1% of retail sales in North America every single year. You can search up that statistic and verify that with multiple sources. Direct sales, think of you know, Facebook marketplace, going and buying some used furniture, that would be direct sales. 
Kijiji, Craigslist. This ecosystem is less than 1% of the way people purchase things today. Normally, people are using online, Amazon, you know, big box retailers, Target, Walmart, et cetera, et cetera. I've given the example many times of Netflix making Blockbuster's business model obsolete because they cut out the middleman. Amazon uh, poses a big threat to retail because they remove the middleman. You can click a button and have what you want instantly. That is the key. MLM is not direct selling. So this is the first mistruth uh, that Richard expresses here in the video. We're not even one minute into this. We're 52 seconds in and he says, a lot of people are looking for looking to use MLM as a means to market their product. Well, I'm sorry, Richard, that's just not true. But he's gonna he's gonna prove me right by continuing on uh, in this video. Either they get into it and they fail dismally because they don't understand the industry, or they do things that are highly questionable, unethical, and sometimes outright illegal. Not because they're wanting to do something illegal but just because they do not understand the boundaries in which they're working. Red flag number two, 20 seconds later, not even. He talks about the very first point that he brings up when talking about MLM is the inherent built-in risk of being prosecuted for fraud. Why, if this was a legitimate industry, would that need to be the first thing you brought up? Imagine if this instead of being a video from a multi-level marketing guy giving you an intro to his channel about how to run a successful MLM company. Imagine if instead this was a, a video intro to a channel about starting your own McDonald's franchise. Do you think the first thing that the person presenting that video would say is, oh yeah, there's a lot of you know illegality that happens and people getting in trouble and of course not. So that's a red flag too. The fact that the very first thing he talks about is the the risk of being prosecuted for crime let's continue now the mlm industry is pretty heavily regulated and there are serious consequences for messing up in this industry so if you go out there and you put together your mlm concept and it another lie the mlm industry is not heavily regulated i i disagree with that the mlm industry is governed by the direct selling association which means they're self-governed the Direct Selling Association is funded by the biggest MLM companies, and it's not, you know, we already know how the cycle goes. The FTC is the one responsible for keeping consumers safe in the United States, and by extension, other parts of the world where these US-based MLM companies have, you know, branched off into, have spread to. So that's their job. However, the FTC, their budget and the direction they go and the things they uh, prosecute and don't prosecute is decided by Congress. And the interests of people in Congress are decided by corporate lobbyists, sponsors, money, basically. And who's one of the biggest corporate lobbyists? The DSA. I, I was in Washington, DC. I went to their office. I went to the Direct Selling Association headquarters on K Street in Washington, DC. This is where all the big like lobbying firms are. And unfortunately, the security wouldn't let me go past to go up the elevator and actually go into the Direct Selling Association's office. But I was there. I was there. And so they're extremely active. They have an MLM. You know, MLM is acutely aware of the fact that they need lawmakers to turn away and turn a blind eye to, to what they do largely. And that's a huge priority for them. So... Yeah. It turns out to be deemed a pyramid or a Ponzi scheme, literally, you can land up in jail. Rarely happens. In the, U in the U.S., running a pyramid scheme is considered a civil offense, meaning regardless of how many people uh, ended up getting divorced because of the, one, you know, one of the people in the couple being brainwashed by an MLM, if you refer back to the Lula Rich documentary on Amazon Prime, they, they talk about relationships being destroyed. It doesn't matter how many people lost their entire life savings. It doesn't matter how many people committed suicide. It's a civil offense. You are very unlikely to go to jail. Even consider this gentleman, BK Bareko. Damn, I know, I really know so much about this shit. BK Bareko uh, was the CEO of Vima, 
he was fined and he had to pay a let's let's look at it the FTC received a $238 million judgment against Vima and BK Bareko. However, the FTC agreed to partially suspend payment of the entire $238 million in return for BK's payment of a $470,000 fine via the liquidation of personal assets. I think he had to give up his house. So Vima, one of the biggest pyramid schemes of all time, countless people got fucked in the Vima scam. And what happened to their CEO? Despite the company being uh, fined or found guilty of whatever this, whatever the interpretation means of $238 million judgment, he had to pay a $470,000 fine. And that was, the, that was the end of it. $470,000. Think about how much money he made. $470,000, it was nothing. And he walked. And Alex Morton walked. And, uh, you know, again... Uh, another incorrect uh, citation here by by Richard Sletcher in this video that you could end up in jail. You could end up in jail, but I can't imagine what you would have to do uh, to end up in jail if BK Boreco, CEO of Vima, had to only pay $470,000 in fines. So this is not something that we want because visiting our clients in jail is really very stressful. So what we wanted to do and what I wanted to do was put together a channel that tried to help company decision makers, CEOs, um, CFOs, you know, marketing directors, etc., who wanting to get into the space to understand the ramifications of the various aspects of the business. You know, we talk about the incentives and the recognition and the social side of it and how to structure compensation plans. We talk about... Um, the products and how to decide on product ranges and the pricing that you need to come to um, in order to make this viable. So we discuss all of those things here, but we also discuss what you need to avoid, the, the legal ramifications, um, what to absolutely stay away from. So MLM for CEOs is a channel really aimed to helping the, the multi-level marketing industry to become better. Now, a big reason why I started it is because People who are doing things that are illegal, unethical, uh, immoral, um, as I said, running pyramid schemes or Ponzi schemes, even though they're doing it through ignorance, it damages the industry badly. Every time one of these clowns comes along, puts a business together without actually doing proper research, and then lands up in trouble, lands up in the newspapers, lands up going to jail, whatever, it damages the industry as a whole. So insidious the way he is talking about when these clowns come along uh you know giving the idea that there's this us versus them mentality there's us good mlms and there's those bad ignorant clowns who come in and they give the industry a bad name make very clear mlm is not an industry that needs more regulation it is not a business it is a scam it is a criminal syndicate a criminal organization every single mlm company is part of the pyramid. Think of it, you know, this is where, this, what I'm about to say, is really what can drive people to madness when they understand it. All of us understand when thinking of an individual MLM company, let's think of Vima, okay? Because I'm safe to talk about Vima without getting sued. Who's going to sue me? With Vima, you had people recruiting people who recruited people who recruited people. That's a pyramid scheme. We recognize that, right? However, the industry itself and the conglomerate of companies make up a pyramid scheme of pyramid schemes. Neutralite was the first one. Two distributors from Neutralite, Richard DeVos and Jay Van Andel, went on to start Amway. Amway acquired Neutralite. Amway became the boss dog. Every MLM that exists is a little baby Amway, branching off of Amway. Yes, Amway has tens of thousands of distributors who are recruiting distributors who are recruiting distributors and it's an impossible endless chain but think there are hundreds of companies that use this same model so this is an illusion it's an illusion when the ftc shuts down a company for being a pyramid scheme it is a performance art piece of justice being served no real justice is being served you know it's like saying that being a 
a drug dealer is a legitimate business, except for the ones who get caught for selling drugs. Well, the, the same criteria that you could apply to arrest one drug dealer could be applied to all the rest of them. The same is true of MLM. The same criteria that was used to shut down Vima, Advocare, Holiday Magic, the list goes on, can be used to and applied to any other MLM and you would discover the same thing. You would discover the, you know, the four key points that Robert Fitzpatrick lays out for red flags of a pyramid scheme uh, or characteristics of a pyramid scheme in his book, Ponzinomics. Endless chain recruiting model. That's, that's all of them. Pay to play. Well, they all, you'll have to pay to play in all of them. Uh, extreme money transfer from bottom to top. That's true in every single MLM that has been studied. It shows, it's, it's been shown that 99.7% of people annually lose on average and 1%, less than 1% makes all the money in a single calendar year. And uh, so what did I say? Pay to play, uh, emphasis on recruitment, endless chain, um, uh, extreme money transfer. Yeah, I mean, so again, I, I'm just really disgusted with this guy Richard Sletcher's video here and the things that he's saying when he talks about, oh yeah, all these, these clowns, he uses the word clowns, these clowns giving the industry a bad name. This is not an industry. This is crime. It's crime. It's fraud. Okay? That's what it is. Even the biggest, most reputable, longest standing MLMs, you will find them doing all the same things that the companies who were shut down for being pyramid schemes we're doing if you look hard enough. So, you know, attacked by the FTC, a manifesto by Peter Mingles, yeah. And you get people running around saying, oh, this is a pyramid scheme or this is a Ponzi scheme or whatever. They're ignorant because obviously in every industry there's people doing unethical, immoral things. False equivalence, logical fallacy number 1000 in this video that has only been going on th in, for three minutes. In every industry, there's people doing bad things. In every industry, there's people doing bad things. This is the bad apples argument on steroids. No, Richard, it is not the case that the people who are running Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes are simply bad apples besmirching the name of a reputable, legitimate industry. The FTC has never, ever, ever, ever named one MLM company that's doing it right. And there's no surprise. You shouldn't be surprised that Peter Mingles and Scott Johnson can't name one that is doing it right because there isn't one doing it right. Deep in their hearts, they know the truth that if you were to look at any MLM company and really analyze it, force them to produce their reports. How many distributors do you have? How much did they make on average? What's the, what's the income disclosure? Uh, how, do, how do your distributors, your top distributors, actually conduct themselves on social media? What kind of claims are they making? Well, you'll find the same thing in every single one. In my video about I Am Academy, I talk about how uh, their CEO once publicly said in an interview that he got the idea for the I Am Academy business model from being a former distributor in Amway. In this Primerica video that I'm working on, you'll see a, an excerpt from the founder of Primerica's memoir, where he talks about the place he got the idea for the Primerica business model being MLM was from his time as a distributor in Amway. This is a process that has been repeated countless times and it's like fighting the Hydra. Once you really understand how, how big this is, you'll think, you, you'll start to look at the, what I'm doing as like, damn, this, you're trying to empty out the ocean with a teaspoon. By the time one company gets shut down, which in some cases it takes years of them investigating, dicking around, doing whatever they have to do, and then come the, you know, the actual legal battle just for an a anticlimactic resolution, a, a measly fine, and then everybody scatters, all the top distributors scatter and go start their own companies or join other companies. This is a process that has been repeated since the very beginning. It is the template for the MLM industry starting. Thank you, A. Louise Mack. Oh, I don't want to lose my train of thought here. Starting with the very first MLM, Neutralite. The founders of Amway joined Neutralite as distributors. They thought, hmm, we should be number one. We should be the number one. 
So they went and started Amway. Now they're the number one. People started, you know, uh, A.L. Williams, who was in Amway, thought, hmm, I should be the number one. So he branches off, starts Primerica. And, you know, I did a stream uh, a little while ago talking about David E. Monitier, who was in prepaid legal. He was in Organo Gold. He was in, he was a promoter of OneCoin, which wasn't even a pyramid scheme. It was a straight up Ponzi scheme, like not even multi-level marketing, just a straight up Ponzi scheme. Then he went to join IM Academy. Now he has his own company. By the time one company is shut down, three, five, ten more have taken its place. So it really is an overwhelming battle. And I think, you know, what I hope to do is over the course of the next few years is just build up a database of you know, video essays, documentaries about each of these companies to show that regardless of how different the product is from one to the other, whether it's crypto, um, insurance, shampoo, they all are doing the same thing. The, the same pyramidal things apply to all of them. So again, I'm just so disappointed with this, with this guy, Richard Sletcher. It's like, it, it is very like, somebody had a comment here and says like, uh, Beyond says he feels more like the kind of insidious behind the scenes guy who gets the initial investors to start an MLM. It's worth remembering that MLMs are started by people who know what they're doing and know how it works. Exactly. You know, this guy is not a public, you know, he's on YouTube, but this channel has a thousand subscribers. This guy is not like a, at least to me, not a recognizable character in the MLM world, but to know that there is somebody like this behind the scenes that could present the plan to someone who wants to start an MLM or give advice to someone who's running an MLM and they really truly believe without flinching, without blinking, that this is a legitimate business is like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I can't diagnose anybody, but if you truly know the, the facts about MLM and you know that 99% of people lose money and you know that they all do the same thing and that every a company that shut down for being a pyramid scheme was a legitimate MLM up until the day it got shut down. That means that you know what is going to happen to people who join the company and you still think it's a good idea. I think the word for a person who has no empathy for bad things happening to people is a sociopath. At least, again, I'm, I, I'm not here to diagnose anybody. I'm not trying to say he's a sociopath. From my layman civilian understanding of what a sociopath is, what sociopathy is, that's what it is. Having no empathy. You don't care. So again, yeah, just just scary to me. It's really scary. I want to thank A. Louise Mack for, for the third stream in a row, I think. <laughs> Gifting 10 memberships. Wow, look at these people who got memberships. We got... Jojo B, Scarlett, Davon, K Shepard, Victor G, Will Martin, Sabrina Rivera, Draco PD, Messiah M. I hope I'm saying that right. John, all gifted memberships. A. Louise Mack, you are a fucking G. Thank you, A. Louise Mack. I appreciate you. Um, <sighs> the business is a bad apple tree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Traveling lunatic, what up? Let me see. Uh, I missed the donation as well from somebody. Let me see. Tip history. From I Love Canada. Okay, this is Traveling Lunatic, I think. Uh, and they say... <laughs> Can't wait for my shout out on BFR tomorrow. Yes, Scott and Peter. I'm so stupid that I donate to Marco, <laughs> Eliza for Mod, and Alex for Empress. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Um, traveling lunatic said, sitting at a restaurant in Prince George, supporting the cult. Aww. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the cult. And thank you again, Alex. You're amazing. All right. Let's, let's continue on. Here we go. Every industry. Pick an industry and I'll show you there's companies doing something really wayward in those industries. But it seems to be because MLM is geared towards individuals that it gets a really bad rap very quickly. So we put together MLM for CEOs to try and get the message out there that, look, this is a really, really good business. Listen, 
you know, joining a network marketing company is profitable. You can join a network marketing company Listen. if you're a networker and you work hard and you treat it like a real business. In other words, you're not doing it an hour a week, but you really get stuck in there, put eight hours a day into it, really focus on it, learn what you need to learn. You can make good money. Again, absolutely contradictory to what has been said in every single MLM presentation I have ever watched, whether it was live and in person, live on a Zoom presentation, or an archived video that somebody recorded. Every single MLM presentation will tell you that this is a great part-time or full-time opportunity, that you can make good money part-time, and then you can move up to full-time. And if you really go hard and commit yourself full-time, you can make you know unlimited income. They quite literally say unlimited income. So I have a video on my channel, why making money in an MLM is impossible where I show that that is just mathematically untrue. If you recruit five people, now great, you're on the top of the pyramid, you have five below you, but those five have no one. If all those five successfully recruit five, now they're on the top of their own little five-person pyramid, but those people at the bottom have no one. That bottom layer is always going to be exponentially 80%, approximately 80% of the total people in the company if you're using this five-by-five five model meaning the majority of people in the company will be losing money. It's almost guaranteed, 99.7%, if that's not close enough for me to say uh, almost guaranteed. And so for him, for Richard here to say that it is a good business and you can make really good money if you blank is completely misleading in my opinion. It is implying once again that you are the variable. You are the catalyst for whether it's successful or not. The system works. The business works. But do you work? This is a lie. Do not be fooled for do not be fooled for a second by this. If you set up an MLM business with your own product ranges, that can be a license to print money if you do it right. I'm going to play that again. What you need to learn, you can make good money. If you set up an MLM business with your own product ranges, that can be a license to print money if you do it right, and it can be a long-term business that can go indefinitely. That can be a license to print money. This is a guy who is teaching you, presuming the person watching this video is a, is a person who wants to start their own MLM. You want to start your own scam where 99% of people every single year are going to lose money, but it can be a license to print money. What he is saying, what that translates to is, this can be a license to victimize 99% of people who will ever be in your organization so that you can fatten your own pockets. This is absolutely sociopathy or maybe even psychopathy. I don't know, but it, it is completely wrong. It is a complete falsehood. What he's saying is true in the sense that, yeah, you can make good money, but are you prepared to be a, a sociopath? Are you prepared to treat people like numbers? And, and continue to perpetuate the lie that he himself has spewed in this video, that if you just work hard and you treat it like a real business, it's not a real business, and it's not your business. If you started it, it would be, but he is, he doesn't even seem to realize, he is confirming the truth that a pyramid scheme is only a good idea if you are the one running the pyramid scheme. It's profitable for you if you're running it. He is not talking about being a distributor. This channel is called MLM for CEOs. And the title of this video is Multi-Level Marketing for CEOs in depth with Richard Sletcher. So he is telling you that if you start your own MLM business, business, you can it, it can be a license to print money. This is quite literally a guide for scamming. You know, the average size of a network marketing company is around 30,000 members. Now, if each member is just doing $1,000 a month, suddenly you've got a $30 million business and a month, $30 a month, $30 million a month. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. So these businesses can be incredibly profitable. But as I say, the risks are high if you don't do it right. So we are now looking for, and I know this is a bit of a promo here, but we're looking for people in the industry, specialists in MLM, who have got a story to tell about how they're doing things ethically, how they're doing things morally, about all of the different touch points with M M in MLM and how to do them well. So we're looking for people that we can interview um, who can bring their voice to this channel, who can bring their voice to trying to uplift the MLM business as a whole. Now, I need to stress that if you decide to, to come onto the channel and we decide to interview you, 
it will be about you. It will be about your story. It's not about us. It's not about what we're doing. It's about your voice. The rest of it is, is irrelevant. He's already given his pitch. Now I want to jump over to a different video on his channel. His most popular series on his channel, unsurprisingly, is explaining the different compensation plans in MLM. Here you can see the unit level plan, the binary plan, the forced matrix, the step stair breakaway, the two up plan, the mono leg plan, the board plan. Now, if you're like me, you would look at all of these plans and go, these all sort of look like a variation of the same thing. Aren't these all mathematically impossible endless chains? And if you think that, you'd be correct. The answer is yes. They are all mathematically impossible endless chains. And I think you're going to be stunned as we go through each of these briefly. You're going to be stunned to see this gentleman talk about each of these as though they are their own unique thing, as though they are in some way different. And he even goes over the pros and cons of each of them and why you might want to do this one instead of this one. Mind you, these are, we'll just, let's go into it and you'll see what I mean. Explained. Um, we're about to get started with this one, but before I start, can I please ask you to subscribe, ring that nope. bell, subscribe in this is and how it's structured and where you would potentially use it. So here we go. So the one thing about the uni level compensation plan is firstly that anybody can recruit as many people as they like in their front row. So a person can go out and recruit 10, 20, 100, 1000 people into their front row. There's no limit to the front row size. Each of their people that they recruit can also recruit as many people as they like into their front row. So you can have hundreds of people in your first row, hundreds of people in your second row, and so on and so forth. And traditionally, these things tend to be pyramid in shape so that you have very, very broad bases because the person can recruit as many people as they like. So the power of the unilevel structure is that you can actually reveal leadership rather than having to go and select leadership. In something like the stair-step breakaway, what happens is you need to actually go and find the leadership identify the leadership yourself, then promote the leadership into a position uh, of leadership. And in that way, you build your team and you build your leadership. Now, that has the big advantage of a much more selective process and, and highly focused process in terms of getting your leaders. But in terms of the uni level, what you do is you create rules. And based on the people achieving certain milestones, they will reveal themselves to be leaders. So a person who can build a massive team has obviously got leader potential. So here you might say to Mary, listen, if you go out and you sign up two people, I agree with Beyond in the chat. Beyond says, okay, guys, we need to archive this channel. There's absolutely no way this will stay up when it gets eyes on it. I absolutely believe this. This is, this, I, it's really stunning what we're watching right now. I, I hope you guys recognize the cultural and historical importance and significance of what we are looking at right now. Never before in history has this type of information been available to the public where someone will actually show you the inner workings and the structure the skeleton of how to operate one of these scams. That's what we're watching right now. We're going to make you a bronze. So she's already identified herself as being capable of signing up people and leading them. Then you want to discuss leading. They won't use the word recruiting, leading, sponsoring, uh, you know. But whether she's got leadership potential. So you might say to her, okay, help your two people, your two new IBOs to become bronze in their own right. So to you, Mind you, this is the uni level plan. The uni level plan means not that there is only one level. It means that you can have as many directs, meaning as many direct recruits in your first level. So he's giving an example here of Mary who has recruited two people and those two people have each recruited two people without even us going any further. We'll go further, but without even going any further, you can already see how this is Call it whatever the fuck you want. Call it unilevel, call it binary, call it forced matrix. It's all made up flim flam, hoopla, nonsense. This is a two by two. Call it what it is, it's a two by two. Two, get two, get two, get two, get two. And you can use the same math as the five by five, five by five, or the six by six, or the eight by eight to once again recognize that this is a mathematically impossible endless chain recruitment pyramid scheme where there is always going to be the most people on the bottom level. Mary's at the top. There's four people on the bottom. In this case, Mary is the originator of the scheme. So we'll assume that she's the top dog. If we keep expanding this out, it's just going to be the same thing we would see, whether it was five people in the, in the first level or 10 or one, you know, anyways, on we go. What? And if you can sign up two bronzes, if you can help your two people become bronze, then what we're going to do is we're going to promote you to silver because we're going to recognize that you're capable of helping your people build a team. Helping. Helping. Then you might say to her, now what we want to see is 
can you train your people to do the same? So if you train your two bronzers to help their people to become bronze, so that can you train train them to help people? The language he is using is an absolute bastardization of these words. You are not training people to help other people. You are deceiving people into deceiving and fucking over other people. That's what you're doing. How are you going to how are you going to convince them? Well, it's a great opportunity and you can fire your boss and that horrible job and they each go and sign up two people then what we're going to do is we're going to make you a gold so you can see as she helps her people to grow their business and then we're going to make you a gold you're a bronze in your first layer and then you become silver and then now you have three levels of two people now you're a gold okay so again incentivizing the you know the the increase in rank is dependent on what recruiting people the unit level plan he has not talked about selling product yet so let's continue she rises in rank. Now, the beauty of that is that you don't have to worry about whether she's a leader or not. You don't worry, have to worry about whether you've selected the right person or not. All you've got to do is put the rules in place. And based on her ability to bring people on board and to train them, she identifies. My baby is sleeping. Thank you, not Panda. I appreciate you. I, know, I already know that's Johnny Azul who donated. Thank you, Johnny. Herself as a leader. So that's the big power of, of the, that's the real power of the uni level plan. What you can do is you can say to her, okay, if you want to really become a powerhouse in the leadership department, what we want you to do, go and build another team of seven. So go out and build another silver team. And if you go and build another silver team, we'll promote you to platinum. And then if you go and build another team of seven. Look at this. He's literally drawing out a pyramid, literally drawing out a pyramid scheme. And you know, the funny thing is I did go uh, ahead of time and peek at some of the videos. He draws a pyramid in every single one of these videos. Every single one, the unit level plan, the binary plan, the forced matrix, the two up, it's all a fucking pyramid. We'll make you a diamond. So, I mean, these are just arbitrary ranks and arbitrary structures, but the idea is that by giving the person a target, getting them to go and achieve the target, what you can do is you can identify your leadership purely through the activity. And so- You can identify who the biggest scammers are by who, who recruited the most people. Traditionally, these businesses will grow very fast because the people are trying to rise up the rank and your top people, the cream rises to the top, those top people. Peter Mingle's uh, buzzword right here, uh, for those who caught it. Fuck yeah. The cream rises to the top. What does that actually mean? The person who deceives the most recruits the most. And the person who recruits the most rises up. Really go out and build. In MLM, this is a good thing. Big teams very quickly. Now, the application is that... Obviously, if you've got a business that you want to grow. Here we go. Read this. The cream rises to the top. Leaders identify themselves by building a bigger team. Sorry, by building a team. Surprise. The bigger the team, the bigger the leader. Wow. Go figure. Fairly quickly, but you still need strong leadership. This is an ideal mechanism because what happens is as people are rising up, they're building the big teams, but you're not having to worry about the leadership. The cream just rises to the top. So in a place where you need leadership, but you don't want to worry about picking leaders, this is a good option. Then, of course, there's the issue that when you've got a complex product, you do need leadership, people to train their people, people to teach their people what they're doing. And so this is an ideal situation where people with complex product can learn how that product works. And when they're recruiting and training their people, they pass that knowledge on. So very powerful in a place where you've got a complex product. Oh, now we're talking about products. Oh, okay. Then of course, leadership is required. So anywhere where leadership and strong leadership is required is a great place and then stability. And I just want to Stick on. This really feels like it shouldn't be on YouTube. Like this really feels like secret shit we've stumbled upon. On this leadership thing for a moment. If you've got a business, now the average, average network has got about 30,000 active agents in it. Now, if you've got 30,000 active agents, you cannot run that network yourself. It's just impossible. It's too big. If everybody were to try and phone the company just once in a month, you'd get 30,000 phone calls. You'd need an army and a huge call center to, to deal with that kind of volume. So what you're wanting to do with, with these compensation plans and specifically the uni level is you're wanting to create these leaderships, these leadership bubbles so that people are talking to their leaders. So you might have bronzes talking to silvers and silvers talking to golds. And this is commonplace, just different uplines who you refer to as mentors or, you know, I'm not going to say the name of the company, but this person was my chairman. This person was my and on and on. Gold's talking to platinums and the platinum's talking to the diamonds, diamonds talking to the crown ambassadors, and you are just dealing with 10 to 20 crown ambassadors. So you deal with the, the top echelon on the network as a company owner, and you let them handle the network. And then all of your training related to support would be first talk to your upline, then talk to your upline leadership, then talk to your upline diamonds, then- Meaning talk to your upline, then your upline's upline, then you- Then talk to us. 
so that you cut down the amount of noise generated in your company. Now, this doesn't seem obvious when you're just starting out because you know every single person in the network. But when you get to 30,000 people, you don't know the people in the network. You know, you're kind of up there in the clouds and they're down there on the ground and you never get to meet them. You never get to see them. Very seldom do you shake their hands. You might be in the room with them when you're doing a national convention or something like that. But basically, you don't have contact with them. And that's why the strong leadership is critically important. What he's saying here about how people who are so far down in your organization, in your downline, are people you would never even meet, reinforces the thing that I said on stream on Wednesday, where I talked about how nonsense and maniacal the MLM business model is based on the fact that, you know, this sort of plays into the idea of saturation. If you live in a town with 1,000 people and you're the only makeup salesperson, you have a monopoly and that's good for your business. If you recruit 500 people now to recruit makeup, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to sell makeup. But in an MLM, this is exactly what they want. They want you to recruit 500 people. Even if you live in a town of 1,000 people, recruit your best friend, recruit your next door neighbor. It doesn't matter because you're getting paid off the recruitment. No, no, we don't get paid to recruit. We get paid when somebody buys a product. Right, who's buying the product? The new recruit who bought the starter kit, who the starter kit was part of them becoming a distributor. That's not a retail sale. That's not a customer paying for the opportunity and then them also buying uh, the product for themselves. That's not, you know, again, the, this thing where he's saying, um, you'll never even meet these people. They might be in the room at a national convention, but you'll likely never shake these people's hands or meet these people. This reinforces what I said the other day when I said, think about the fact that, you know, the five degrees of separation, the six degrees, five degrees, whatever. I say five because with social media, the internet, it's, it's five. You know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And that, that rule of five, the handshake rule, they sometimes call it, connects you to any single person on the planet. I gave the example the other day where I said, maybe I went to high school with someone who has an uncle who works at the, uh, at the EU and the person at the EU knows somebody who's a translator in Africa who knows the tour guide who knows the tribal leader of this village in Africa, some remote part of Africa, that would be an example of the five degrees of separation connecting me to a person that I would never otherwise have a hope of meeting in my life. That highlights how ridiculous it is to have so many people as part of a downline and then to claim that it is all about selling products. Do you think that it would be fair for you to sell something and you know that a guy who is 20 levels above you got a cut of that? Where, where on earth, in what industry does that happen? Where the person who actually makes the sale doesn't receive the lion's share of the commission? Complete nonsense. And specifically with the uni level, that is structured to just bring leadership out of the woodwork. They rise up, they identify themselves, and they lead your business. So that's a very powerful part of what this is all about. So the strengths is it's very stable. A person who builds a big network knows how to build a big network, knows how to run that network. They know what they're doing. You don't need to worry about it too much. So it's, it's not stable at all. Let me go back to this image. Let me go back to this image, right? Okay, so let's look here. All right, boom, perfect. Mary in this image has become a diamond. Mary has become a diamond because she recruited four people. That made her bronze. Those four people recruited two people each. That made her silver. Those two people each recruited two people. Now she's a diamond. This is not stable at all because I'm going to use my mouse here. So follow my mouse, okay? Let's say this one person right here, this one person left, all right? So there's, let's see how many people we have. Mary plus four is five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. So twenty nine people in the company, right? Based on this image, there's twenty nine people, right? Let's go and look here. Twenty nine people in the company, and in this bottom layer, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So sixteen out of twenty nine people. Sixteen out of twenty nine people are in the bottom layer. 16, 81%. I just did, I just did the, did the calculation. Uh, 29 divided by 16, 1.81. So 81, or did I do that backwards? 16 divided by 29. Maybe I'm supposed to do 55. Okay. 
maybe is it, point is the majority of people in the company are on this bottom layer chances are this bottom layer of people is not earning you know they're, they're com imagine their commission right everybody has to get paid if any of these people in this bottom row makes a sale everyone above them has to get paid so it's safe to assume that their commission is likely very very small insignificant even compare that to the cost that it uh, it costs them to join the company, events, training materials, gas, driving to the office, opportunity cost of their time, sitting on Zoom meetings, listening to bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, if even one of these people leaves, right? I'm going to use this person right here in this uh, second leg, okay? Look, let's say this person leaves. If this person leaves, well, then this person no longer has two people below them, which breaks the it breaks the chain going all the way back up to Mary. If this person leaves, well, now this person doesn't hold the same value for this person. And if this person doesn't hold the same value for this person, well, then this person doesn't hold the same value for Mary. So Mary's diamond status is so fragile that if even one person at any point of the chain, I mean, it would be even worse if one of the people in a higher level left. Like imagine this person, who was Mary's second recruit. Imagine if Mary's second recruit left. Now something called compression would happen. Th and this is it. This makes it yet a another piece of evidence that this is a huge fucking scam. If this person right here, we'll call them John. If John decides to leave the company, you know what happens to these two people here? They don't just disappear and stop benefiting Mary. You know what happens? This person gets erased. And the first person who they recruited, let's say it's this one on the left, takes John's spot and everything shifts upward. This is called compression, okay? Now Mary, now this person who was in Mary's second layer actually gets moved up to Mary's first layer. So it compresses upwards. So this person, John, who originally did the work to recruit these two people, who recruited these two people, if they decide to leave, Mary still benefits from the recruits of John. Doesn't seem very fair to me, but John is gone now. And so John's recruits get transferred up to Mary. They get compressed up towards Mary. But again, now if John leaves, there's still one man short in this leg, which means that this person is no longer eligible for what they had. This person is no longer eligible for what, what rank they had, which means Mary's... Uh, compensation or bonus or whatever it was that she was working towards uh, is now gone for that month. She would have to recruit or somebody in her organization would have to recruit to replace that person. This is one of the biggest parts of what makes MLM a scam. The floor is constantly falling out beneath your feet. And you are, it's like, think of a Roadrunner cartoon. I, I have this vision in my mind of, of, as a kid of Roadrunner where he's like trying to run across the Grand Canyon. And so like, he doesn't have enough wood planks. So he takes one from behind him and puts it in front of him. And he's temporarily suspended in midair. And that's how he sort of builds the road in front of him to go across. That's essentially what's happening. It's in a constant state of collapse. So for Richard to say, oh yeah, you know, one of the good things about this plan is that it's stable. Well, no, the fuck it isn't. Rebecca B, quoting R Richard from the video, you're up in the clouds and they're down on the ground, almost like a pyramid. Exactly. I mean, he even said at the beginning of the video, it's a pyramid shape. Duh. Imagine if one of her four people left. That's seven gone. Actually, no, it's not. I used to think that, but that's... It, it still breaks her structure if you don't replace that person. It still breaks her compensation. Like, she still... It still hurts her, but it's a bigger scam for the person who left. Because imagine you were in an MLM and you recruited 10 people, and then you realized it was a scam, so you left. Well, imagine your people stayed, though. Well, they just compress upwards. So your upline is still benefiting off your hard work even after you left. Yet another layer to why it's a scam. What up, Kirsten L? All right. Bring leadership out of the woodwork. They rise up, they identify themselves, and they lead your business. So that's a very powerful part of what this is all about. So the strengths is it's very stable. A person who builds a big... Thumbs up the stream, by the way, guys. 165 watching, only 118 likes. Network knows how to build a big network, knows how to run that network. 
They know what they do. Julie Anderson says, that's exactly what happens. I lost my rank. My upline lost her rank and her car bonus just like that. Exactly. You don't need to worry about it too much. So it's a fairly stable operation. There's very strong leadership, as I said, because the person has identified themselves. You are just literally, the, the leadership is rising up from the crowd. And that's wonderful because you don't need to worry about that. There is a weakness here, though, however. And that is that some people can rise up quickly. They start making good money. Then they take their eye off the ball. And as a result, they can absolutely get demoted really rapidly. So Let's look at this again here. Leadership is revealed rather than selected. Well, duh. If there's no recruiting, there's no money. That's, that's MLM 101 for you. Weaknesses, rapid demotion. People can rise and fall in leadership ranking very fast. I forget what the term is that Robert uses in the book. Uh, not rise and fall. It was something with like some alliteration to it that made more sense. Not pump and dump, but something like that. Um, I forget what the term he used, but... Yeah, that's exactly what does happen, rapid demotion, because like I, like I detailed before, the majority of people in the company, by design, you know, look at the design, look at the structure he laid out in this very well done, professionally, uh, you know, generated video. Where's that fucking lot, a picture of the, of the graph? Here we go. So, like I showed before. I'm going to make you a gold. So you can see. Find it. Here we go. Every, no matter what variation this structure takes, whether Mary has four people in her direct line or 10 or 100, as he said, that's the unit level plan. You can have as many directs as you want. The majority of people are always going to be, to be in the bottom rank. If the majority of people are always in the bottom rank, that means the majority of people are always losing money. The people who are, who are the highest risk when it comes to leaving are the people in the bottom rank. So where does this leave you? Well, if by design, the majority of people in the company are always going to be in the bottom rank, AKA losing money, then it stands to reason that the people who are most likely to leave are the ones losing money. So what's the solution? Well, that means everybody has to be constantly recruiting. Mary has to be watching her P's and Q's if any of her directs leave. Her directs need to be watching if their directs leave. Their directs need to watch if their directs leave. So. Of course, the rapid demotion can happen because let's say Mary, you know, uh, does some event where she or some social media posting. Let's say she already has a social media following and she recruits a whole bunch of people who recruit a whole bunch of people. And the hype is strong for the first month. Well, look, Mary's a diamond. But after the first month, if a, a bunch of these people in the bottom rank go, well, Mary, you told me this was going to be sick and I haven't made any money. I'm actually out. Imagine this entire uh, fourth layer here quits or third layer here quits. Well, Mary has dropped from a diamond back to a platinum or whatever the rank was before. So yeah, rapid demotion. And then if that happens, well, now these people are the bottom rank, not making any money. So these people are now more likely to leave. That's why there's these constant events, constant Zoom trainings that, you, that are mandatory. You can't miss it. This, you can't miss this event. It's going to change your life. These are hype rallies to keep you motivated where they say shit like, just when you want to quit, that's when you need to keep going. That's when it's most important to keep going. Even the top people screaming from the mountaintop at the stages of the events, they're doing this strategically and routinely so that they can cover their own ass because it's in a constant state of collapse. It is so fragile. They need people to stay. They need you to stay. So, uh, yeah, complete nonsense, but let's, let's keep going here. What are the, what's the other weaknesses here, uh, Richard? People to become a bronze they should sign up 10 because they need to have a situation where there's never just a case of relying on one person dropping down for them to lose their rank. They need to have several people propping them up. So that's one of the weaknesses. of Exactly what I said. Constant recruiting, constant collapse. This is a way of overcoming it. And then, of course, um, training does suffer because with people rising up the ranks quite quickly, there sometimes isn't a chance. Yeah, almost. Hey, Richard, it's almost like pop and drop. Thank you, Dave Vaughn. Thank you, Dave. Two goon points for Dave Vaughn. For reminding me of the term it's almost richard it's almost like the emphasis is on recruiting and not on actually training people about the product and he names that as one of the weaknesses wants to really train them into the business jimmy bastian says i had seven thousand people in my acn downline and was still broke figure that out <laughs> yeah 
You can have a person who starts, and if they're good at what they do, they can rise through the ranks within a couple of months, but not really have an in-depth understanding of the business. So we recommend highly that you have standardized training. Uh, if you're using a uni level, have an e-learning e system, e-learning platform, standardized training in video format, which the people have to do. With an EdReady system, what we do is we have a, an e-learning platform. The person does the course. Or when they've done the course, they do a test. If they pass the test, they get the promotion. So it's critically important that they're able to actually do the test and prove that they are able to achieve the goal. This is the, the strategy that Primerica, WFG, PHP utilize. Because their product is insurance, they are bound by the government rules that say you have to have a government issued license to sell insurance. So with that, you have to pass a test. Okay. But again, it, it's sort of, it's just secondary. Even once you get the license, it's all about recruiting. You'll see that in my video. So you might have bronze training, you might have silver training, you might have gold training. Each of those um, training sessions would prepare the person to be in that position. In that. Devin Kelly, thank you. Dropping a small back towards the Nickelback Fund, thank you. Hey, appreciate you. See you on the replay and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, we will. Thank you, Devin. Leadership role within the team. So that's it from the um, uni level. Again, as I say, these are not meant. So that's it for the uni level plan. What? To be in-depth looks at the... This, this series is not meant to be an in-depth look at the, um, the compensation plans, but it's meant to give you a very good overview of what the compensation plan does and where you could potentially use it. So again Go fucking figure. All right, let's see what Richard has to say about uh, the binary plan. I'm very excited. We, we looked at the unit level. Let's look at the binary plan. Hmm, this will be interesting. Let's check it out. It gives you absolutely explosive growth. And one of the reasons for that is for, from what we call up motivation. In other words, people just spilling down the legs and, and creating a lot of momentum, a lot of excitement um, in the plan. And I'll show you how that works. So when you join a binary plan, you start up at the top of your own network and everybody you sign up will either go down the left or the right hand side of your network. Each person who does who joins in turn can sign up people in the left and right. So you can see here, Anne just signed up John and Fred and Mary just signed up Tim and Lisa. Now, I'd just like to back up here to show you something. You'll see that Mary's first person goes into her right leg and that's because Mary is in the right leg and therefore- Thank you, uh, Beyond. Just a reminder, Eliza, for mod Thank woman raising hand light skin tone. Thank you, Eliza. <laughs> Appreciate you again, Eliza. Eliza's going hard today. She really wants that mod chip. Maybe that was someone using her name and donating under her name, but shout out to Eliza. Hey, Eliza, I can feel the stars shifting. That's all I'm gonna say. Or that is her dominant leg. So she's dominant, right? So her people will start off going into her. <laughs> so that's it for the fuck you upside down and backwards plan. Right leg. In the same way, Anne's first person went into her left leg. That's because she is a left leg. And so she's dominant left and John would spill into her left leg. And of course, again, what is the point of all of this shit, man? What is the point of this? Well, it's a binary plan. So you were in her left leg, which means you have a left dominant leg. Aren't we here to sell fucking products? Pretty sure last time I checked product sales, only a couple things mattered. Shark Tank. What are the questions they ask? How much does it cost for you to manufacture it? How much do you sell it for? What's your profit margin? What are your current sales? What the fuck is all of this? Well, you recruited Anne and Mary. My wish is that Eliza becomes Maud and Alex becomes Empress. Thank you again. Alex, thank you yet again. Um, yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, what is the point of all of this, how, how does this, how does this reinforce your guys' uh, the MLM industry's claim that they are doing, that MLM is a form of direct selling? This has nothing to do with selling. Of course, everybody in the team below her, below them would, would sign up into the teams, either left or right. So you can see here, you've got two teams. Yet again, he is trying to, he is, he's making this video and talking as though something different is going on. And yet all that has happened is once again, we are looking at a two by two. It's called the binary plan because you can only have two directs. And that means that your two directs can only have two directs, but it is still an ever multiplying endless chain two by two. That's it. You've got two teams. You've got a team on your left hand. Thank you, Alexis, for gifting a membership to Julie Anderson. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you so much. Obama. All right. What up, Sam here? So many different words for pyramid, literally. This, the same way they have different words for what they do. Multi-level marketing, network marketing. I'm going to kill myself. 
left-hand side called your left leg. You got a team on your right-hand side called your right leg. Now, you get paid in these binary plans on the lesser of the two legs. Now, there's numerous different mechanisms. Again, that why? Just bullshit extra steps to make it confusing so that you keep recruiting and don't actually look into it. Thought stopping. Make it as complex as possible. Well, you actually, you know, if you have a left dominant leg, you have to be considerate of that and you only get paid on the lesser of your two legs. Why? Why any of this? You, you get used, that get used to pay you. So the pay leg volume is one of them. So you get a percentage of the shorter of the two legs or the weaker of the two legs. Here you can see in your left-hand side, you've got $1,400. Your right-hand side, you've got $700. That means the weaker of the two legs or the pay leg is the $700 leg. Now, you would get a commission. Let's say you're getting a 10% binary commission. In this case, you would get 10% of $700. You'd get paid out $70. So every single time what the business cycle gets 10% of 700 Look at all this work you've done. You've convinced. So this is your left leg and your right leg. You've convinced your right leg. You've convinced two people to join you who have convinced two people each. So we've got how many people in the company? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 people. 15 human beings joined and look at all the money that has been spent or sold rather. Look at all the money. I guess the way I should say it is look at all the money that's been generated. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen hundred dollars and seventeen and seven hundred dollars. What is that? Seven, eight, nine, twenty. So twenty one hundred dollars total has been raised, but seven hundred was raised in your left in your right leg. And that's the lesser of the two. So you get paid 10% commission on that. So out of 2,100 total dollars that have been produced by your organization, you're getting paid $70. I, I don't know what Richard's goal was here, but this is looking more and more like a scam the more he explains. $100, you'd get paid out $70. So every single time the business cycles, it's normally done on a weekly basis, but every week you cycle, commission is calculated based on the weaker of the two legs, and you get paid out a percentage of that. Now, the matching volume, which is another concept you need to be aware of. What do you mean he's repping Ukraine in every video? End pass. Is the point at which the two volumes on the right and the left leg match. So Matching volume. Oh, okay, cool. So when you have, okay, let's check it out. See, see how this works. $700 matches $700 on the left leg with a $700 leftover. So we call that matching volume. And you'll see here what happens is we deduct $700 from both legs. You land up with naught in your right leg. You land up with $700. And that's considered to be banked volume. So there's another concept for you, banked volume. So the banked volume could then be used in a following cycle to actually offset or match and therefore allow you to get paid out. So again, what? fucking nonsense imagine trying to keep track of that you couldn't and you know how i know because the site that this guy has if i go to his about section on his youtube channel and i go to the site mlm for ceos oh but i gotta show you this too i found this site which is really insane Yay, his site's not loading. Yay. Okay, check this out. This is a site, Infinite MLM Software, where you can... Eliza, thank you. Billions and billions. Dave Vaughn says, a lot of these plans use points instead of money, and those points have thresholds. You need... Yeah. Again, making it as complicated as possible. So how does making money work? Yeah, exactly. Oh, the background. Yes. Just so many different ways of making a pyramid. Congrats to all the people who got gifted. Uh, Eliza gifted five memberships. Jay Solmatic, Brenda, Brent DeBoer, uh, and Cami Sarah. Congrats, you guys. And Pat Yu. Congrats, y'all. Uh, thank you, Eliza. Okay, so look. There is a site called Infinite MLM Software. You can buy this. And it's literally a calculator that calculates the fee, the commission, tax deduction, like you literally would need a calculator to figure this type of shit out. And that's exactly what it is. Look, you can get a calculator for the binary, the binary plan, the matrix plan, the unit level plan. Let's click binary. So look, you can put in information and put in all these different metrics. What's the ceiling? How much does the product cost? What's the, uh, how many levels? What's the commission? What it, on and on and on. Look at this, just impossible, impossible to wrap your head around without a literal 
Scam calculator, you know? Ooh, MLM for CEO's website can't be reached. Super sus. All right, let's continue here with the binary plan. It becomes part of the volume of your left leg moving forward. So the strengths, the first strength is spillover, where people are spilling into the network. The second strength is power leg, where you get one leg that just grows explosively. The weaknesses are orphans, where you get people who are left to fend for themselves and runaway commission, which is very risky for the company because you can have a commission that just balloons out of all proportion. So let's go through these strengths and weaknesses to show you. So the first thing is spillover. Let's say you are the only person recruiting in your network and you recruit Anne and you recruit Mary. Now, when you recruit your next person, you can't put them in your front line because you only allow two people in your front line. So the next person would go under Anne. So John gets placed under Anne and the next person would be placed under Tim. Then if you signed up Abby, and Val, they would be placed down your left and right legs at the bottom. So you can see that Abby spilt into John and Anne's leg. That means- it How ridiculous is this? How could you even keep track of this? Jimmy says, I worked in a few car dealerships, made a few months of 30 plus cars sold, 10K plus in commission, never had to recruit anyone, didn't have to pay to join. In fact, I was paid to be there. Seems simple enough to me. What do you guys sell? We sell cars. Okay, how much does the car cost? 30,000? Okay, what's your commission? You make this much? Okay, that's all you need to know. Learn about the car so you can sell it to the customer. Sell the car, you make your commission. What is all this? Well, the spillover into your left leg and you know, it's... Even though John and Anne haven't recruited anybody, they've got people in their legs. Now, in the NetReady system, what we do is we send an SMS to John and say, hey, somebody just joined your team. And then we send an SMS to Anne and say, hey, somebody just joined your team. And so we create this up motivation, which gets... Beyond says, what's wild about this is this is actually a data structure called a min heap or a binary heap. It is a very useful data structure for sorting lists. It's a very robust algorithm. Why they are using this layout is baffling unless they're trying to reduce the search time in a search algorithm yet. Yeah, no idea. It's everybody in the network excited, even though they haven't even started doing anything at this point. Imagine having to learn all these terms in order to fucking sell shampoo or ketones or whatever the fuck. Well, you know, there was some spillover in my right leg and, you know, I, Jesus, there was some ballooning and I had an orphan in my left leg. So, I, you know, there was some spillover and I had a, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Already getting people placed in their team and they're getting notified of that. So spillover is a very powerful concept. And it's one of the reasons that these. Again, this is just more flim flam in order to imagine being in court. If the MLM company was in court, the judge would be so fucking confused. It's all misdirection and subterfuge and flim flam and nonsense to mislead. Whether you're a recruit who could never hope to wrap their head around this or a regulator or a judge, it's all by design. And the fact that he's talking about this like, oh yeah, this is really cool because it's so fucking insane. Binary plans grow so fast. The second concept is the power leg we talked about, big positive. So a person goes out and they sign up Anne. So you sign up Anne and suddenly Anne signs up John and John signs up Abby and this thing just goes crazy. This left leg of yours just goes wild and that's called your power leg. And it's growing without your intervention, it's just happening. You then can focus on building your right leg. So you put Mary into your right leg and Tim into your right leg and Val into your right leg. And the thing is that that right leg is now your only focus. Again, without having these images in front of you, these graphs, it's so, you know, it's just, it's just, again, you're only just focused on recruiting in any of these examples he brings up. It's just different ways to draw a pyramid. In this case, it's a, it's a binary model where you can recruit two who recruit two. It's still an ever exploding two by two endless chain. So in reality, you're only building half of the business because the other side is taken care of by the team in the power leg. So that is a very powerful concept. And again, the reason that these businesses grow so fast is because actually everybody's only focused on growing one of their legs. Now, there are problems with this comp plan. The first problem is off. Yeah, no shit. Now, what happens is Anne gets all excited because she's got this power leg. So she puts her first person into her right leg to try and get her pay leg going. And then she never recruits another person in her life. And what happens is that Fred becomes an orphan. He's isolated. He's not in the power leg. There's nobody helping him grow his business. So he's actually got to grow his entire business by himself. And so these orphans really do have a tougher time of it because they've got to grow both of their legs. Again, no talk of sales here. Six minutes into a nine minute video. Now, some of the ways we overcome this is we know that in the whole industry, the average recruits per person is 1.25. How oh, you, 0.25 of a person? Explain that. 
So in other words, if you take your total number of people and see how many they recruit, on average, they're only recruiting 1.25 people in their lifetimes. So it's not per month. It's exactly. Think about that. Listen again. Recruit, on average, they're only... Listen again. It's 1.25. So in other words, if you take your total number of people and see how many they recruit, on average, they're only recruiting 1.25 people in their lifetimes. In their lifetime of being in the MLM, the average number of people that any distributor recruits is 1.25. And yet in his intro video, he says, this can be a license to print money and it's a good business. So it's not per month, it's ever. The incredible thing is that if they're doing 1.25, you get exponential growth. So that number is a wonderful number because it provides you with exponential growth, but it also allows us to elim not eliminate, but limit the damage that you can, can be done through orphan place. He became a leaking spillover orphan by proxy power leg. Exactly. So simple. So what we do here is we force the first person down the dominant leg. Now you can see Anne is a lefty, so her dominant leg would be left. So in actual fact, Fred would be placed at the bottom of the left leg because it's her first recruit. Her next recruit would be placed on the inside leg, and that's fine because if she's able to recruit two people, the chances are she'll be able to recruit three, four, or five. The second way... Made it up. You just, he just finished saying the average is 1.25. So if she's recruited two people, she's already above the industry average. By his own data, uh, you know, presentation here, by his own data citation, but yet he says if she can recruit two, she can recruit three, four, five. We overcome the problems with orphans is we teach them to focus on sales. So they go out and they sell products, they get retail commission. Now that's a level playing field for everybody, and there needs to be retail commission in your business. That's part of the the legal strategies that the the authorities have put in place. So you have to have retail sales. So if you focus again, talking about evading the authorities, it's like a Tutorial on tax evasion. Let's listen to that again. It's a level playing field for everybody. And there needs to be retail commission in your business. That's part of the, the legal strategies that the, the authorities have put in place. So legal strategies that the authorities have put in place. Seven and a half minutes into his nine minute video explaining the binary plan, he finally mentions, oh yeah, you have to have retail sales, by the way. You have to have retail sales. So if you focus Fred, for example, on retail sales, he will pick up automatically, he will pick up some downline members who will start his business growing. The next thing we need to talk about is normalization. Now, one of the big problems of binary commissions is that you get runaway commission. It can literally balloon out of all proportion and you can land up paying 120% of your, your earnings. So you've got to put some protection in place. And what we do is we, we call that our parachute. We call it normalization. Dude, spillover, orphans, uh, left dominant, parachute. Listen to all this fucking nonsense. But the idea is to limit the commissions to 40% no matter what happens. Limit the commission to 40% no matter what happens. Seem fair? So if the commissions balloon, you want to limit them or normalize them to 40%. And the way that you do that is in the system, you place a 40% normalization and the system will then reduce everybody's commission across the board by a percentage equal to whatever is necessary to bring it down to 40%. <laughs> Amazing. Now, obviously you've got to tell your network, you can't have unrealized expectations and you've got to make sure it's in your terms and conditions. And then you hope like crazy that you don't get this thing kicking in too often. If you do, it's time to adjust your commissionable values because obviously you're paying too much commission on your products. Yeah, 120% of your earnings. Mind you, he's talking to the person watching this video as though they are the CEO. He's saying limit your IBOs to 40% so that it doesn't take away too much money from you. Yeah, another another weird thing he said. Thank you, Dave Vaughn, for, for mentioning that. Uh, if you focus on retail sales, you automatically get downline members. Yeah, he says if Fred here focuses on uh, on uh, retail sales, he'll get downline members. Let's watch again. They go out and they sell products. They get retail commission. Now, that's a level playing field for everybody. Level playing field for everybody. Hmm, doesn't seem that way. And there needs to be retail commission in your business. That's part of the, the legal strategies that the, the authorities have put in place. So you have to have retail sales. So if you focus Fred, for example, on retail sales, he will pick up automatically. He will pick up some downline members who will start his business growth. How do you figure that, Richard? So much pre presumptuous language going on in this video. Well, the average recruit only brings in 1.25 people. But if Mary was able to recruit t two people, chances are she'll be able to recruit three, four, and five. So if she's 75% above the average recruiting uh, abilities of people in the industry, it's safe to assume that she's going to 3x and 4x and 5x the capabilities of, you know, the average? Oh, yeah. And if Fred is focused on retail sales, then he'll pick up some recruits. How does, how? Where do you even, how do you even figure that logically?
If you recruit 20 orphans in your right leg, you can make runaway commissions to become a millionaire and then just put a parachute of 40% on it. What the fuck are you talking about? Let's watch another one. Let's watch the forced matrix compensation plan. This is the last compensation plan we'll watch because you get it at this point. It's all the same shit. To start life, you have a thing downsides all compensation plans there isn't a perfect now the forced matrix has some real benefits but it also has some downsides like all compensation plans there isn't a perfect con compensation plan anywhere in the world so they all have their upsides and their downsides i'm going to try and highlight those and show you how they work so in the forced matrix generally you have a thing called a three by three or four by four or four by five or whatever each how? voice of jessica higdon i gotta react to another uh pay to play to win episode or yeah pay to win episode each of these matrixes has a certain number of people wide and a Beyonce says that's actually pretty sound. Look up the 80-20 rule. That's the Pareto principle, right? What's pretty sound? Maybe I, maybe I went too fast. What's pretty sound? The, anyway. A certain number of people deep on which you get paid. So in this case, I'm gonna do an example of a three by three. Forced matrix, such a good name for getting into an MLM, literally, because you're being forced into the matrix. So you could put three people in your front row, as you can see here, and then each of those. So he's using a three by three. So let's listen again. I wasn't paying attention. Thank you, Trey Tino. Y'all thumbs up the ting if you're watching. I'm gonna try and highlight those and show you how they work. So in the forced matrix, generally you have a thing called a three by three or four by four, or four by five or whatever. Each of these matrices has a certain number of people wide and a certain number of people deep on which you get paid. So in this case, I'm gonna do an example of a three by three. So you could Put three people in your front row, as you can see here. And We're then literally watching a bl blueprint for fraud, a blueprint for crime. Each of those people could put three people in their front row and each of those people could put three people in their front row. So in this three by three example. Again, drawing a pyramid. Beyond says his, his assertion that Mary getting two recruits is an indicator she will get more. Top recruiters do have a tendency. Okay, fair enough. But I mean, still, it's, it's, not, it's not rooted in any fact. It actually contradicts his initial point that the average person in the MLM will recruit 1.25 people in their lifetime. And yet he's assuming that if someone manages to break through that ceiling and recruit two, they'll recruit more. But you could be right. You would earn on all of these people in your network, but the people below that would not be in your, in your income stream. Now, the way that it works is you can place these people in your, in your team. The first thing is you place your first three people would go directly into your front line. So you can see here, Amy, Tim and Ash are all in the front line to you. If they were to recruit people, those people would go into their downline. But let's say that you recruited another three people. Now, there's a number of ways that you could place those people. You could place them anywhere in your team. But here, for example, would be an automatic typical placement that you would start from the left and you would move right and you would look for holes, openings where you could place them where somebody hadn't already recruited some, someone. So you can see Amy here potentially hadn't recruited anybody in her front line. So you could potentially place your first three people into her front line. Now, that would be con considered a spillover. So you would be recruiting these people and they would be spilling into Amy's team. Now, very exciting for Amy because she'd get an SMS say, hey, somebody just joined your team. Even though she was not involved in that recruit, somebody had joined her team and spilt into her downline. There's another way of placement. So you could, for example, have one person that you recruited placed under each one of your people. So it would cycle through your people and find a spot in each one of them. So now I've recruited three people or you've recruited three people. One has gone into Amy's team, one has gone into Tim's team, and one has gone into Ash's team. Or you can actually force where you want those people to be placed. So for example, here, you might have recruited three people, you could have put one underneath, uh, um, directly underneath Amy, and then you could have put one underneath one of Amy's people, or two underneath. So you can put a person in the downline of Amy's downlines downline, even if that person doesn't exist yet, Make made, made it up. Amy's people, here you've got somebody you popped into Tim's team, and you also popped into one. Yeah, it, it literally is the same drawing, Monica, just different bullshit around it of Tim's downline people's teams and Ash also you popped somebody down into the lower rank so this allows you to decide where you want to place your people and who you want to help so th that's a very powerful method of growing your business so you recruit somebody you say hey listen I'll put somebody into your team and then you pop them down their downline and you can control that so typically within the force matrix it allows you to either automatically place your people or you can choose where you want to place your people in the matrix you get paid in the force matrix generally the primary way of getting paid is by levels so the people no fucking shit you have in your front line are called your level one if you go down another level those that's your level two so even if you've placed them below say the people in your front line they would be in your level two and you get paid on level two and that would be your level three and if you have a look here on level one i've given you an example where 
you're getting paid 10% on anybody in your level one, uh, 5% on any, anybody in your level two, and of course, in this particular example, 2.5% on anybody in level three. Again, dog shit commissions, I don't care what you're selling. Realtors sell a house for 600K, a million dollars, and get three, four, five percent We're talking about 2.5% and you had to recruit three, six, nine, 12 people who recruited three people each? Now, the problem is that on average, each person only recruits 1.25 people. So that means that you land up with a lot of holes in your business and a lot of people outside of your depth. So in this case, you're only earning on three levels. But what happens to the people who get brought in by the people in level three? Well, they're out of your depth and you don't earn on them. So that is a big challenge for the, for the system. So or for anybody building a, a, um, this kind of network. It's a challenge that you don't get paid on an infinite number of levels. It's a challenge that you just don't get to outright run a Ponzi scheme. Now, because the average is 1.2 people per person in their lifetime. Dave Vaughn says, this would get so confusing as you have so many people above you and below you looking to place people. Exactly, dude. That means that you've got a lot of holes in the network in reality. So if you look in your network, you might see here that this person on the right, which was Ash in the previous, previous example, is active, but the other two people are not in your front line. You've got several people who are not active in the, in the business. And the problem with that is you can't put anybody in to replace them. Because how, how do you replace them? You can't replace them because they are filling up your front line. So what normally happens is that within a forced matrix, the guys allow for a thing called compression. So the way compression works is that the people who are not functioning are ignored by the compensation plan. So you can see a number of people have moved up in level. Now, this is still a forced matrix, but when the commissions are calculated, here an example is um, people on level three are moved up into your level two. And so Literally so, getting paid for someone else's work. Certainly these people are replacing the people who were not working. So theoretically, you could be being paid on people who are in your level five simply because they are compressing up. That's how they get around it. I recruit John. How is this legal? Well, it's not. If any regulator took, in, took into account and actually uh, examined one of these companies or plans, they would see what's going on. It is a pyramid scheme. And it's really amazing. I, I do think this channel, maybe tomorrow, once word gets around that I covered his channel on my stream, I think they're going to delete this channel completely. They're going to archive all the videos. At some point they will because it is so brazen and fucking like the absolute nuts that this guy has to have to have a diagram on screen literally showing a pyramid scheme and talking about it like it's some legitimate thing. Well, you know, it's the force matrix. And if someone's in your fifth generation, they can compress upward. Fucking nonsense. Nonsense. John's not working. John's recruited Mary. I would earn on Mary because she would become a de facto level one for me when the compensation plan runs. She gets compressed up to me. And so that's the key thing about compression is that you actually earn in the depth, even though you didn't recruit those people, even those people are actually outside of your matrix, they compress up to you and you earn cash on them. And that's how they overcome that fundamental problem with the force matrix that you suddenly aren't earning on most of your network because of all the dead nodes. Now, where this compensation plan works really, really well is if you've got subscription sales. So any kind of subscription-based product, like for example, telecommunications or ACN, things like utility bills, et cetera, where somebody joins the business, goes out and finds a bunch of, bunch of their friends and subscribes to the service or the product. It works very, very well in there because the person has to buy it anyway and you build up your network, you build up your, your, your force matrix and you generate income from that. You're not I believe this was the compensation plan in ACN that Nathan was presenting where he talks about, uh, you know, would I, have, would I ever have to remind you not to use your cell phone? Just switch over your phone. You're going to be buying it every month. Uh, clever. Uh, same thing with Primerica. It's clever because they are selling things that are intangible, which is good for two reasons. One, it spares the company from having to uh, like actually manufacture products and slap a label on some protein powder or shampoo or something, and uh, you know transport and carry and have warehousing for all that stuff. Having intangible services makes it a lot easier uh, for that reason, and also because it spares you from, it, it's easier to deceive people when you're telling them about the thing. Like, uh, like I said in my ACN video, if, if the Wi-Fi or the phone plan that ACN is offering is cheaper, 
theoretically, people should have no problem switching over because you can't see Wi-Fi with your eyes or, you know, you can't see a phone plan with your eyes. People are really only concerned about if the price is competitive. Whereas with a shampoo, you may have some emotional attachment to the branding or the history that you have with that uh, shampoo and you're less likely to switch over to the MLM shampoo. It, it's not as big of a sell. Not expected to do any training, any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's great for consumer networks, it's referral networks, um, affiliate programs. So it's, it's really cool for like affiliate programs where you're not expecting anybody to do anything. You're just saying, hey, tell 10 people about the incredible products we're selling. If they sign up, we're going to put you into their matrix. It's a multi-tiered matrix and you will earn some affiliate commission out of anybody who's doing anything. Dave Vaughn says this basically kills the argument that you should get paid for training your downline producers. There's zero chance you're training those folks. Exactly. Thing there. It's great where you don't need any leadership. So that's a key issue. Oh, for beyond. I, I bet you as well, this software probably sells for thousands of dollars. If you're not le requiring need leadership, it's perfect for that kind of environment because you don't need to train your people. You don't need to do any work with them. You just off you go and sign them up and they do their work. There you go. Sign them up, do your work, don't train. So it's, it's good for the application is for subscription based sales. No leadership required. Amazing. Consumer networks works well with consumer based referral networks such as multi-level affiliate programs. Okay, but so it works with what it is. And then lastly, it tends to grow fast because you're not having to do any work with your people, because there's no training involved, because you're not having to really build your, your network. It's basically a one-off purchase or a subscription purchase that the guys are running with. There's not a lot of work to be done. So it's a very simple business. No MLM has ever been a one-off purchase. Not as far as I know. All of them find a way to squeeze you multiple times to bring people into monthly. So that's where the application is primarily. The strengths um, spillover is a very powerful motivator. The fact that I'm sitting in the team and somebody places people into my network, the, it creates a thing called up motivation. In other words, the people below me motivate me. So there's this up motivation. So it's very, very powerful to get people motivated in the business. Um, you maximize earnings because of, of compression. It really doesn't matter if my people are not working or if there's dead nodes. As long as there's enough depth in the business, I'm going to earn dead nodes. <laughs> Literally a psychopath. The maximum amount that my uh, three level matrix in this case, this example will generate. So it's very powerful in terms of ensuring that the guys who are doing the work are actually maximizing their incomes. The weakness is maximize earnings. You earn on all your levels, even if some of your people are not active. Great. Very little breakage. Due to compression, the maximum commission is paid, reducing breakage significantly. Breakage is what I talked about before, where if one person leaves, well, now there's a break in the chain where that person isn't eligible anymore or the person above them isn't eligible anymore because, you know, that person in the fourth layer left. So the third layer suffers because the third layer suffers, the second layer suffers and on and on. From a company perspective, this please do beyond download these as fast as you can. I wonder if there's some app that can download his entire channel's library. Dave Vaughn says, even the $5,000 Enagic machine needs monthly filter replacements. There you go. Very little breakage. Because of compression, you're always paying out maximum commission. The problem is I don't think the FTC would do anything with this channel because it's not a specific company that he's promoting. He is, he is quite literally detailing the business model that is used by different MLM companies. Some use the binary, some use the force matrix, some use the unit level, some use the two up, on and on and on. It, it, it's just nonsense though. Uh, the MLM, the FTC is, the FTC needs to recognize that every MLM is a scam. Every MLM is part of one big pyramid scheme. They're truly, think about this, right? If the claim that every MLM makes is true, that it's an unlimited income opportunity. Well, then why would there need to be multiple MLMs? If it was an endless chain where it was actually feasible to recruit three who get three who get three who get three infinitely, well, then why would there ever need to be more than one MLM company? Everybody could just join at some point of the downline in a singular company. Well, what I want you to recognize, guys, is there is only one MLM company. The entire industry is just Amway. The entire industry is Amway and then a little breakaway clone of Amway and then another little breakaway of that breakaway and on and on and on. So, you know, I, I really hope that in my lifetime there is some sort of RICO case where the 
criteria is outlined for the business model itself as a scam. And then we can just apply it to every MLM company to shut all of them down. Start with Amway. Amway is the problem. Amway is the one responsible for that 1979 decision, the Amway rules, as they are referred to, that every MLM can say, oh, well, we operate just like Amway as a sort of legal defense. Well, kill Amway and we'll have our solution. Revert the 1979 decision and we'll have our solution. Poof, no more MLMs. And that will prove it. If Amway, if Amway was no more, the rest of them would be no more. But again, it is such a big industry. I really think people don't comprehend. Go l listen to Ponzinomics or read Ponzinomics. People don't comprehend the scale of it, the scope of it, how big it is. You know, we're talking an industry, hundreds of billions of dollars a year that are being sucked away by these scammers as opposed to going back into the economy. That's huge money, huge money. This is an industry bigger than the movie industry every single year. So they will not go quietly and the politicians will be sad to lose their payday from uh, the MLM lobbying and super PACs, whatever, the DSA. But it's going to take what every big social movement in history has ever taken. It's going to take people marching in the street saying, we don't want this. It's going to take a politician brave enough to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to stand up for this thing. I'm going to sign bills and lobby in favor of this, uh, you know, being shut down. And... Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's going to take a lot, but that's what I'm trying to do. So you've got very little breakage, and so there's not a lot of sort of leeway in terms of your compensation plan. If you're planning to pay out 40%, generally in a force matrix, you get very close to paying out the full 40%. Other goons, help beyond download this library of content. Relatively quickly. And then, of course, you have churn, because... I don't need to work with my churn. Wow, he's admitting it. People, I don't need to train them. I don't need to motivate them. If they don't work, it doesn't matter. I still earn on people below them. So I don't generally have to worry about them. And that, that creates a lot of churn. People just leaving the business. They decide they don't want to subscribe to the product anymore. And because I don't need to work with them, because I'll get their bottom, their downline anyway, I just ignore them and they can. Eliza says, go and it doesn't matter to me. So it creates a tremendous amount of churn in the business. And that is a definite negative when it comes to the um, to the force matrix. Every MLM has churn. All right. Eliza asks question because I'm curious. You talk about no good MLMs, but if an MLM were to be good, what would that look like? I'm honestly curious. On paper, the FTC's definition of a legitimate MLM is where you can make money by selling the product or recruiting people who also sell the product and you get a, par a part of those sales. That doesn't happen though. The MLM companies are reporting the retail sales, which are actually just the costs that the new recruit paid, the starter kit or the subscription to the insurance or the phone plan or whatever that they were incentivized for when they joined as part of the opportunity. If you took that away, you would see every MLM company fail instantly. If you took away, if, the, if some rule was put in place, if some rule was put in place that said, okay, hey, MLM companies, you're allowed to um, recruit people, but just know that when you recruit a person, they don't have to buy the, uh, sorry, let me, let me rephrase this. If they made a rule where a person who joins an MLM can't pay for the product, like they can't themselves have any sort of uh, benefit to buying the product for themselves, like ACN, for example, Nathan talks in the video about how you get points in the comp plan for switching over your own phone plan, your own electricity, your own, uh, you know, heating, home services, whatever. If that was gone away, that would be a huge blow to the MLM industry. Industry. I keep saying industry because, you know, to the pyramid scheme scam is what the real terminology I should be using. But for the sake of understanding, well, I'll say the MLM industry. If you took away the ability for people to inventory load, like in, uh, we watched in the Lula Rich documentary, women were just buying loads of the leggings for themselves because their own purchases counted as commission towards themselves. So that's why you had
people who are making you know 10k a month on paper but actually losing more money because the money that they were paid in commission came from their own purchase to stay at their own rank whatever 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 every mlm still as far as i understand does this even if the product is not a physical tangible product like leggings or shampoo or whatever you can still inventory load because uh, i'll give you an example in an insurance-based mlm if you yourself purchase an insurance policy it can your you know that counts towards your own pv personal volume so you have an incentive yourself to buy if they got rid of that if they made it so that a person's own purchases couldn't count towards their volume, I think we would see a big, a, a, a big downturn in MLM. Trey Tino says, I've been listening to Pontianomics before bed every night on Audible. I love that. What's up with the creatine update? I'm still taking it. I'm, I'm only doing a scoop a day, though. I'm not doing a loading phase, so it's going to take me a while to, uh, for it to show. There's another video he has. I want to show uh, the coffee shop presentation. I haven't seen this one yet, and I'm very curious. See, he has a few on it. The coffee shop business presentation example. Let's check it. The business opportunity coffee shop presentation. Building your business opportunity presentation. I mean, look at all these videos he has, bro. It's really insane. All right, let's look at uh, most popular. Compensation plan elements. Pricing your product. Um, building your network marketing prospect list. How does level-based commission work? How to find your first 100 people to your MLM business? Oh, here's Eric Worre. GoPro book review about Eric Worre's book. Create a commission structure to drive the right behavior. The future of network marketing. MLM versus pyramid schemes. Oh, I have to... Okay, that's too long of a video, but I have to just see a bit of that. I can't wait to see what kind of mental gymnastics he spins for that video. All right. It's like, again, the fact that any industry would have to make a distinction between what they do and crime is, is so telling. But I hope I answered your question, Eliza. Uh, a legitimate MLM, if it did exist, would be one where nobody was getting, nobody was being incentivized to recruit. You were, you were selling, you were making sales, and then you were recruiting people who also made sales to get a piece of their commission. But it's inevitable that it's going to turn into a pyramid scheme because your commission in these companies is so low for selling the product, and it only gets bigger by you recruiting more people. It always ends up in this system where it's, it's, you know, disproportionately always going to be the majority of people on the bottom. I mean, what I just described is a pyramid scheme still. So yeah, there is no example. There is no such thing. A legit MLM would be, uh, it wouldn't even be called MLM. There wouldn't be multiple levels. A legitimate direct sales business would be one where you're selling something and that's it. Don't let Ming get into your head. Yeah, exactly. Beyond says, I find all this really interesting because this guy clearly has a good understanding of hierarchical data structures and uses a lot of terms familiar to programmers. Well, he's scamming. This guy is, a pro in fact, a programmer. This channel exists solely to sell NetReady, selling a license for his software. What up, Legend Gaming? For an enterprise, is probably going to take in a ton of money for this dude. Yep. What up, Specs? How can he be older than Peter and have better sound quality? So funny. Peak leech behavior. All right. Let's check it. 180 people watching, only 150 likes. Thumbs up the thing. Let's check this out. The coffee shop business presentation example. Good day and welcome. Thank you for joining us for this Net Ready event. We are live from our studios here in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, our members are going through the. They're exceptional. I've completely fallen in love with them. So thanks, so Skip ahead. 
and you'll be able to see their telephone numbers, who they are, when they came, if they bought or not, etc. Brilliant. We skip ahead. Address and cell phone number. Here we know go. That they've come to our site. Remarket. You can remarket to them and say, "Hey, we see that you were on the site and you haven't bought." Wow, I'm just looking. I'm just taking this in. Mm. And here's a coupon. You can come get a discount, or we can see that they have bought, and we can market to them and say, "Congratulations for buying from our site." Company would think binary commission. Okay, and if you help them earn money, we're going to pay you a leadership bonus for helping them. Mm -hmm. So let's say you help three helping them. This is this is being paid to recruit is what he's describing here. Let me go back just a little bit to be part of the business and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. you with fast me? start bonus. Become a promoter in four cycles. Receive a R1000 fast start bonus. Insane. So far. Yes. Now, we are using a thing called a binary plan and we pay 25% commission, commission on the binary plan. Okay. What now, up, Sam why Stark? we're using the binary plan is because there's four major advantages with the binary plan. The first thing is, and I'm going to draw a line down here, you have a left leg and a right leg and that's it. So when the company puts people into the team, they can only put them into the left leg or the right leg. Mm -hmm. When you put people into the team, you can also only put them left or right. And this leads to a concept called spillover. So you've got two legs, and as a result, there has to be spillover. So if the company signs up somebody, that person gets placed. 25% commission. Bro, imagine you're selling a $20 shampoo and you're getting 25% commission. Underneath Mary. What is that actually? If it's twenty dollar shampoo, and that's cheap, let's realistically let's say it's forty dollar shampoo. Ten percent of that would be four bucks. Twenty percent of that would be eight bucks. <laughs> like ten dollars, basically. Yeah, ten dollars. If the company signs up another person, that person might be placed underneath John. Mm -hmm. Then if the company signed up somebody else, that person would be placed underneath that person. And yeah. this Skip ahead. Partly. So does that mean that if even if the the brand partners recruited someone, that person could fall into Mary's team? Yes. Mary may not even have known this person. Then she but, won't have known the person. But she's but she's yeah. earning from them now. And the the company might have recruited somebody absolutely dynamite. And that person could go out and just sets fire. Build a massive team yeah. for her. And so she might not even have been involved. So you could be that could be you. Yes. And the company could be building a left and right leg. Crazy. Your upline is helping you. Your downline is helping you. Everybody's helping you build because there's only two legs. Do you see the advantage? It's brilliant. And the other thing is that this is an infinity um, compensation. Send that to the FTC. Download this one. When you say that it's infinite, that is, that is a red flag that it's a pyramid scheme. Plan. It's wow. infinitely deep. Now, in most compensation plans, you paid on infinitely deep. You already know. Marco! <laughs> Stupid, sorry. Level one, two, three, four. And at some stage, okay, we're only going to pay up to level six. Mm. Anybody joining in level seven, you don't get paid on. With this plan, a person could be a thousand levels deep here, and he still forms part of your team. Wow. Send that to the FTC. So wow. it's infinitely deep. And as we grow this business out globally, you literally could have a person two, three hundred levels deep in London and somebody else in the States and somebody else in Australia. and somebody Again, he's verifying my uh, explanation about why it's so ridiculous when I explain the five degrees of separation. He's talking about you could have someone in your team that is in Australia, in uh, America, in Canada. Why the fuck would you as a, as a distributor want somebody getting a piece of your sale who lives on the other side of the world? If I went to go sell some shampoo and I earned 25% commission and I knew that some commission was also going to some guy in Australia, a hundred levels above me who I have never even met, who I never could have a, even a hope of meeting, I would be pissed. I did the work. I made the sale. No other industry has something like this. In no other industry is there commission sharing for people who didn't do anything to uh, make the sale. In real estate or in insurance, you might have a commission sharing one level above you if you're a new realtor. And I know this because I took my real estate licensing course when I was 20 years old. 
if you are taking, if you are a new realtor and you're learning the ropes, you might share a listing with a more senior realtor who you go with to the meetings, to the open houses, who he, he, you know, you're shadowing them while they sign the papers and make the negotiations or whatever, but you're both doing work. Like you're both part of it. You're both doing work for it. You might share a commission, but you're not sharing the house, the commission of the sale of the house with a realtor three, four, five, six, seven, a hundred levels above for what fucking reason? It doesn't happen anywhere else. It's happening here because just like his diagram God looks. High specs. Th Legend Gaming, thank you. But let me finish. It's happening here because as his diagram shows, it's, it's not a business. This is a pyramid scheme, not a sales business. You're selling the dream. That's the, that's the product. Legend, thank you, bro. Legend, legend. By the way, you guys, we, when, I, when I talk about the high council, okay? When I talk about the high council, we have to talk about Legend Gaming because I, I've said it before, but if you ever see Legend Gaming in the chat or in the Discord, I'm telling you, roll out the red carpet for that guy because Legend Gaming, you might not believe it, Legend Gaming is the number one uh, donator on my stream in history. Since 2019, the man's has been donating. Since my very first stream, the man's has been donating to me. And uh, if I look on my cult data sheet here, all time number one donator, Legend Gaming. So, you know, that top 10 right there, that top 10 is who I be, you know, when we talk about high council, you know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. So thank you, Legend Gaming. Appreciate that. Don't interrupt. All right. Also, don't interrupt. Thank you, Specs. Jimmy says, my best friend just became a financial advisor a few months ago. One week for nine weeks, then 125% commission. 1K a week for nine weeks, then 125% commission on his sales. Just saying. Exactly. Legend is goon historian and keeper of the books. That's true. Legend is responsible uh, for the, the goon spreadsheet, it's called. It's like an Excel sheet that logs every goon's points. There's points, by the way, in this cult. You guys don't even know about them. Legend has that data. Uh, Spec says, Legend, take away three points from Alley Cat. Hilarious. In Monet, if you make a $110 sale, you make $16, uh, says Eliza Grace. Insane. All right, let's see. So if I was already a millionaire, would a MLM benefit me since I can buy my volume? That's a good question. No, I don't think it would. All right, let me look. What up, Mermanda? He's a Roblox all-star, big money, true. Legend been tithing for centuries, yet. Yeah. Somebody else in wherever, Canada. Mm -hmm. Very. The video we're on now is called the coffee shop business presentation example. Here, let me move this so you can see. There you go. Keep in your network and they would all form part of your team. How exciting is that? That's very exciting. That's pretty amazing, hey? Now, what's beautiful about this is we have a second sort of string to this bow called the leadership bonus okay what we want you to do let's say that's you i know that's a very pretty hairstyle you've got over thank there thank you very much <laughs> let's say that's you what we want you to do is go out and sign up a bunch of people and help those people earn money from this binary commission okay and thank you meek for rocking the cult member t always MarcoMerch.com. you can rock this anti-pyramid tea which comes in a variety of colors uh, from alwaysmarkomerch.com. I'll put the link in the chat right now. If you help them earn money, we're going to pay you a leadership bonus for helping them. Mm -hmm. So let's say you help three, four people earn 5,000 rand. So the yeah. total earnings there is 20,000 20, rand. Are you with me? Yes. If you're a team leader, we'll give you a 15% leadership bonus. Okay. So that means you didn't make any of these sales. We give you 3,000 rands because you helped those people wow. per month. Hmm. If you were a scam, we'll pay you for not doing any of the work except recruiting them. Ruby team leader, and I'll show you uh, the, the, the ranks in a minute, you get 50% leadership bonus. So if they're doing five each, that's 20,000 rand, you get 50%, you get paid out 10,000 rand per month. Wow. 
And of course, if you became a Triple Crown ambassador, you would get a hundred. Triple Crown ambassador, just fucking nonsense. Percent. In other words, for every rand <laughs> your people earn, you earn a rand. Mr. Hull Let me skip ahead a bit. I want to see what else he's talking about here. As you build out your business, wow. you become a team leader. Literally just drawing a pyramid scheme. Oh yeah, creating a better world. We'll feed children, plant trees, change lives. The offer, what you get for your money, membership activation, back office, replicated website, product catalog, lucrative compensation plan, marketing tools, global travel incentives, LOL. This is, it's crazy. This is literally a template for running your own pyramid scheme. This is absolutely um, insane that we have access to this. Connector, promoter, builder, team leader, bronze, insane. And then... Bronze, silver, platinum, rhodium, sapphire, ruby, diamond, double diamond, triple diamond, ambassador, crown ambassador, double crown ambassador, triple crown ambassador. Now, when you become a team leader, we give you 1,250 rands rank achievement bonus. Wouldn't it be, wow. hey, you guys working together, you're driving the business together, mm -hmm. and then you win a trip together and off you go to the Maldives. Yep. Pretty epic, eh? Hard work and play. What can I say? There you go. Okay, we're also involved in a number of social outreach programs. Okay. So there's three areas where we are involved. The first area is we want to create a- Nathan did this too. Nathan I copied this exactly, actually. To do, how to do it, and if you just go- and Wow, Legend ranking up to the gold star. I think Legend's the only one with a gold star as a member here. Been a regional director for six months, bro. <laughs> Billions and billions. I gotta get the bag. That's insane. Let's go. Do you like me? <laughs> Marco, Marco. Play yeah. some more Marco. Paul. Thank you, legend. Thank you. Do what we tell you, you will be successful. How does that sound to you? Great. That's that's where my fear is because I don't I understand this industry, but if you can teach me and give me the tools to my success that I'll be very grateful. Exactly. We're going to give you 800 rands worth of product, so you've got something to demonstrate to people. Joey Case take responsibility. Oh, Legend gifting memberships now. Thank you, Legend. Joey K says, I would never trust any business that was meeting with me in a coffee shop unless I was interviewing to work at the coffee shop. Exactly. That's another great point. The fact that this is called the coffee shop business presentation is insane. Oh, Enpaz. You're fucking four. Enpaz, I like that. Notice, no mention of sales yet, exactly. Fuck yeah, five months, yes, let's go. Where's the fuck yeah? Come on, Marco, fuck. Well, well not that one, what is this? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. Nice. And uh, Jared, member for four months. Legend is a real one for real, for real, love that. Me and Sam also have gold. True, Michael Key with the $5 super chatas. These guys have no limit to their depravity, so true. This dude is literally selling management software, yep. Mermanda, congrats on the gifted membership by Legend Gaming. Aww. Yep. You could just go out and sell that product and you've got 800. Double dump truck, tank spank, plutonium rump level. So true. Getting me bricked with these rank titles, Silicon Valley. Brand if you wanted to, but I would suggest you keep it so you can show people the product. Right. Beyond, member for one month. Thank you, Beyond. Aww. You're poor. You're fucking poor. We're going to give you tickets to the next event. Thank you, Rebecca B, for... Uh, promoting the memberships. Okay. Got a fantastic event. What up, Anna Marie? And coming up, and we would love you to be there. I'd love you to be there. You're going to be on my team. So I would I'd love absolutely to be there. love you to be there. And then we're going to give you the backing. Of Social outreach program equals way to pay less on taxes. Yep, so true. So true. Of the entire Dream Team. So okay. there's an entire army of. I've actually con considered that, Jimmy Bastian, making an MLM company just to prove that they're all pyramid schemes. Thanks again, Beyond. People who are going to be behind you helping you make your business success a success. How does that sound? That sounds amazing. Pretty awesome. Now you're gonna be surprised at this. But, okay. But this opportunity only cost you 895 Rand. Wow. 895 fucking bones? It's been a hot minute. Eliza for Mod and Alex for Empress. You guys are crazy. I feel something happening in the stars, Alex and Eliza. I don't know, it might happen. That's it. Okay. Wow. Only 895, lol, this guy who's like playing along. Wow. Oh, only 895? Bullshit. This opportunity only cost you 895 Rand. Wow. That's it. Okay. Wow. All of this, and it's just 895, and then the administration fee for us to manage your orders, to manage your e commerce website, to do all of that stuff. The back office, the, the machine that calculates it, which I don't know why you would have to pay for that. It's just 
49 rand a month. Per month. 49 a month! Dude, you would never make your money back with this. 900, over $900, basically 950 bucks. And that's just for the first, immediately when you join. 50, 50 additional dollars a month for the back office, not including events, training materials, gas, opportunity costs, insane. Per month. It's wow. ridiculous, isn't it? I'm opening up a business for 895 rent. Exactly right. Wow. So I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Yep. Okay, the first thing is, how much money would you like to earn part-time? Because obviously you start- The Green Aliens Garage Force 10 Sheet Method is the only one that's been proven to work. Hilarious, that's a, that's a reference for the, for the OG goons. Starting part-time to begin with, how much would you need to earn part-time to make this worth your while? Five grand. Okay, so 5,000 rand a month. Yeah. And Stuart, how many hours per week would you be able to give to this project to earn 5,000 rand a month? I could do about 15 hours. That I'd 15 hours a week. Wow, yeah. that is, that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, three absolutely. hours a day. Yeah. Okay, that's absolutely amazing. You can definitely make a massive success with that. 49 Rand is $2.50 US. Okay, so this is actually cheap. And then for how many months would you prepare to do that to get to a point where you're earning 5,000 Rand a month? About five months. Okay, so if we can show you how to earn 5,000 Rand a month. Yes. Working 15 hours a week. It's going to take you five months of 15 hours a week to make five grand a month, but you'll start at zero. Make it make sense. Yeah. For the next five or six months, you'd be- <laughs> Dude, these two are in love. In, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, of course. Excellent. Well, let's get you started. Do you have your cell phone on you? Uh, yes, I do. And oh, no, I've actually just left it in the car. Ah, but don't worry, we can go and get it. Exactly. It's really nice to have you on board, Stuart. I can't wait to make a fortune with you. Me too, Richard. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm so excited to become a connector. Excellent. Okay, guys, so that's how this whole process works. We go through the process on this piece of paper and you'll notice that I use the pen to draw. And the reason I do that is when I pick the pen up from the page, Stuart will look at me. And when I put the pen down on the page, I direct Stuart to look at what's going on on the page. I'm then able to go through each section and tap on it and direct his attention to whatever I'm talking about. So the big issue is here that I want to use the pen. The second thing is that at the end of all of this, I'm going to give Stuart this document. So it doesn't matter that I've squandered this document. Stuart gets it. He's got all of my notes and he's going to remember exactly what I've done. And then last but not least, and this of course is in the training, you'll see how I closed Stuart on this. I asked him the question, how much money would make this worth your while? How many hours a week would you be prepared to put in? How many months are you prepared to do that for? Mm. And when he told me, I'm going to follow you to your car to make sure you get your phone, literally. Like in the WFG video, man's followed me to my car to make sure I had my ID, LOL. I said, so if I could show you how to do 5,000 rand a month for 15 hours a week over the next five to six months, you'd be in, wouldn't you? He said, yes. I said to him, okay, let's get that cell phone out. Let's get you started right now. Now, if he didn't have his cell phone on, I would have got my cell phone out. The reason we don't have our cell phones here is because we're in the studio and we didn't want them ringing because your cell phone never stops, does it? It doesn't stop, no. Absolutely. But I hope this gives you a good idea how in, how long did that take us? 10 or 15 minutes? 10 or 15, Tops. yeah. And we get to the end of this. You've seen the product. You love the opportunity. Mm. I asked you the closing questions. Mm. You've said yes. yes. We're up and running. Richard, I've got a very quick question on the yes, closing. Yes, go for it. If, if I had said something like I want to earn 50,000 rand and I was only prepared to work for five hours a week, is that realistic? No, I would have said to you, look, Stuart, to be honest with you, you cannot generate 50,000. Oh, Julie, do you remember doing this? Thank you, Tanya, for clarifying the, the price conversion. 1,000 rands working five, five hours a week. Yeah. If you do find that job, please let me know because I also want to earn 50 grand working five hours a week. Yes. You know? yeah. So we'd have to adjust your expectations. Okay. I would say, look, if you're going to work just five hours a week, you can probably look at earning one or 2,000 rands a month to start with. Now, okay. Just remember, that's just an entry-level affair. Mm. So if you could earn one or 2,000 rand a month working just five hours a week, you'd be interested in that, sure. wouldn't you? Would. So that would be worth your while. Yes. So what I would do here is I would adjust your expectation because the last thing I want to do is get you on board thinking that you can do nothing. Mm. I'll do all the work for you. You're going to earn a fortune in record time. Right. Because it won't happen and you will leave the business thinking this is a load of nonsense and then you'll go out talking to everybody and their brother about how this doesn't work. Right. Holy fuck. All right, let's watch MLM versus pyramid schemes. What are the difference between them by this same channel? Oh, guess who's in the comments? Scott Tex Johnson. Five days ago. Very good overview. Well done. I sent an email a couple of hours ago and would like to talk with you about being on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God. I was not expecting a Scott Johnson cameo on this stream. I genuinely was not talking about, not planning to talk about Scott or Peter on this stream. Hilarious. Holy fuck. Of course. Because of course he is. And mind you, this is a random video I clicked on. Hey guys. Jeez Louise. Let me see if I, let me see Scott's channel here. About, it says I don't have him blocked, but he hasn't been commenting on my streams. Wow, hilarious. Down so bad. Screaming, I'm dying. Fucking hilarious. Welcome to this Facebook live oh. event. Is it due to education? Here we go. Them because of all the negative press that the that the industry has got. Yes. So a lot of people are are making some pretty negative comments out there. Yeah. Whatever he's gonna talk about me. I I would love if this guy goes on Scott's radio show. That would be fucking hilarious. Uh, Ray would see if he was open and then give him them an out. If not, no big deal. Hilarious. <sighs> Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> you would slap him. Hilarious. You guys, I can't believe Scott's in that. Is it due he always finds a way, yeah. Due to education. Is it just not understanding what is legal, what is illegal? Well, well, there's a couple of things. Let's yeah. just start from the, from the fact that there are people doing unethical, immoral, and legal things mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, mm -hmm. the problem you have with multi-level marketing, one of the key things is that the marketing strategy, mm -hmm. this whole idea of being able to create a, a pyramid, let's call it, of people. Mm -hmm. A pyramid, let's call it. Let's call it. Of people let's call it a pyramid it's like bro this shit save this video too beyond marketing strategy mm. this whole idea of being able to create a, a pyramid let's call it of people mm. who more proof scott is an anti mlm exactly very good overview well done fuck you who are all selling products unbelievably powerful so what happens is people who don't even have a product mm. don't even have a product mm. they leverage this method of getting people involved and they generate enormous amounts of money you mean a Ponzi scheme? Even though there's no product, even though it's an ethical, immoral, you know, illegal, they are able to leverage the power of multi-level marketing in that way. And no, that's not what's happening here, Richard. What's happening here is multi-level marketing is leveraging the power of Ponzi schemes, the ever exploding, ever expanding, endless chain, not the other way around. And he's already going into one of my favorite uh, nonsense defenses for MLM. Oh, it's, it's, you know, there are these companies that don't even have a product. Having a product does not make you not a pyramid scheme. Every company that was shut down for being a pyramid scheme, who up until that day was a legit MLM, had a product. Vima had products. How do you explain that, Richard? Scam people. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is that there are people out there who are scamming people. And, yep. and it's, for me, it's enormously frustrating because one person does that and everybody paints the whole industry with that same brush. And so I, I must be just honest, when we look at a client, the first thing we look at is we look at what they're trying to do. If they're doing anything even slightly illegal or unethical, immoral, we don't take them on as a client. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've walked away from literally hundreds of clients who either through ignorance or through will are going to be landing up doing something illegal. And when we talk to them, we point out what- They have a video called Top 10 Hater Comments. I can't wait because I have, maybe that would be a good video to use as my template for I want to do a video called Top 10 uh, Pyramid Scheme Excuses or Top 10 Excuses Used by Pyramid Scheme Scammers or something like that. The legalities are, we point out what they're doing and how we could overcome those problems and actually do it legally and ethical, ethically. But if they're not wanting to move on their, on their concepts, because sure. some people say, no, this is legal, that company's doing it and that company's doing it, so it must be legal. Well, no, they're also doing something unethical, immoral and illegal. Mm -hmm. So if they don't want to change their, their, their sort of methods of doing things, we just... We just toss them. Don't we, don't, we, don't, we don't take them on as clients, sure. absolutely. We don't want to be involved in anything like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Okay, well, I think let's again start at the beginning and say... Ooh. Ooh, rebuking the top 100, the top 10 MLM hater comments. Ooh, top 10 hater comments part two. Ooh, fuck. Save all these. Save all these. Can you define what multi-level marketing is? I think just give us a nice summary of it because I know that's a lot- Multi-level marketing, a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. There, done. A lot of our clients, when approached with this question, they have a roundabout way of, 
of actually describing what multi-level marketing is. It's complex, but it's also very simple when summarized and you understand what that summary of what is multi-level marketing is. Hey, Anna Marie, that's amazing. I'm a geometry teacher. We learned volume and surface area of pyramids this week. I wore my Always Marco Merge t-shirt with the anti-pyramid logo. That's amazing. Thank you for that. Okay. 100%. Let's just start with, with the fundamentals of multi-level marketing. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the fundamentals of business. So in normal business, you've got a product or a service yep. that you want to deliver to somebody. And what you do is you market that product or service through various different methods. Either it's going to the retail outlets or you're doing it on an e-commerce platform or you're doing it in a, in a real world type scenario where people are coming to a booth or some sort of area where you're selling your product or service. And you then do a transaction with you, with them. They buy your service or your product. Mm -hmm. They pay you for it. And there's what we call a fair exchange of value. That's standard business. Yep. Okay. So multi-level marketing is no different. What needs to happen is fundamentally you need to have a product that a person who's not interested in being a network marketer, that's the key thing, would buy from you because there's an intrinsic transfer value. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah, have a look at all of the happening? ethical and that's moral um, businesses. That's not happening anywhere. By the way, Beyond, the three videos are Top 10 MLM Hater Comments Part 1, Top 10 MLM Hater Comments Part 2, and Rebuking the Top 10 MLM Hater Comments. Out there, companies like, for example, Tupperware or Avon, two prime examples, they have a great product. The vast majority of people who buy the product are not involved in the network. The vast majority are just customers. Those people see the value of the product. They accept that there is intrinsic value. They then pay for the product. This channel is a fucking gold mine. They receive the product and they will buy that product over and over and over again because of the intrinsic value. Yes. Now, where multi-level marketing comes in is it's a method of making the sale. So it's not a method of doing away with having a good product or selling a product that is not valuable. He says that, but he knows me, him, Richard, you, me, and God know that's not true. For money. Mm. It's a method of, of transferring ownership of a great product. So what happens is a person, an individual, will come in, will join the MLM business. There will be this entire infrastructure. The company's handling the, the software. They're handling the product. They're handling fulfillment. They're handling the staffing. They're handling offices, telephones, mm. internet connection. They're handling yes. everything. There's an entire infrastructure there. A person, an individual, then joins the business and they get to leverage this entire infrastructure. They go and see you who's a customer. Mm -hmm. They show you the product. They tell you about the product. You like the product. You buy the product. Okay? Right. Now, if anything in that is unethical, I'd like to know what it is. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's, it's a really cool way of getting your product to the client. I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, Richard. I'll answer that one first point. What's unethical about that is if it really was just about sales, your commissions wouldn't be so inferiorly you know, ridiculously low that there was no plausible way of making an actual living or even a noteworthy side income from selling it. But of course, you, me, and God know that the only way to get a higher commission rank or a higher commission payout is to recruit more people under you. And those people recruit people under them. And now we're, and now we're talking about a pyramid scheme. If you really cared about just selling a product, why don't you incentivize your sales force not to recruit people into the scheme who pay money to join, but by paying them a higher commission so they actually give a fuck. Right. Now, let me compare this to another unethical business that I'm... Also, it's funny he mentions uh, Avon and uh, Avon and Tupperware. Tupper Tupperware, I'm pretty sure, is literally going bankrupt. Tupperware news. Tupperware could go out of business here. Why? Okay, yeah. Going out of business. Warns it, warns it can go out of business. Says there's substantial doubt it can continue. Okay, so his Tupperware example, down the drain. Avon, listen to me. I'm a 27-year-old man. I have never met a girl in my life who's like, yeah, I wear Avon makeup. They go to Mac. They go to Sephora. I've never met a girl who's, who, who has ever used Avon in my life. So also, I think that's nonsense to say. Like solidly against. Let's take the big retail chain stores. Yes. Okay. So what they do is they're only interested in selling the product as cheap as is humanly possible. That's all they're interested in. The cheap. Yep. The cheaper they can sell it, the better. Now, how do they make it cheap? It's real easy. Number one, they squeeze the manufacturer. So when you come to them to sell this, this glass, they're going to push you to give you the, to give them the lowest possible price. They're then going to charge, pay you on 90, 60, 90, 120 days they'll pay you on. So in order to make margin, what most manufacturers do is they reduce the expense of content in their products so that right. they can make margin. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second unethical thing 
is that they pay their staff as little as is humanly possible to keep the prices as low as possible. Oh, so that's the real, I, I get where he's going with this. The real unethical structure is corporate America. That's the real pyramid scheme. They, their products are low quality because they're trying to make the margin make sense for the manufacturer and the, and, the, and the retail chain. They pay their employees nothing. Pretty sure Walmart is doing just fine. Walmart has the biggest uh, employer, uh, what's the word? The biggest employee force, biggest number of employees of any company in the world. So I, I know where he's going with this, though, and he's wrong. So the staff doesn't make any money. They're working for peanuts. If you have a look at the staff in some of these shops. Yeah, the only person who uses MLM makeup is Peter. And ask them what they're earning. You'd be horrified. So the staff's not making any money. Yeah, you'd be horrified to find out that people at Walmart might be earning minimum wage. You'd be you, you wouldn't be horrified to find out that 99.7% of people annually in MLM are losing money and that in, if everyone in MLM was making minimum wage, hell would, be, you know, would have frozen over and pigs would be flying. So Richard is going down a path where it, it would be so easy. It's so easy for me to make him put his foot in his mouth because, again, Richard, you, me, and God know the truth. You want to shit on corporate America and say, oh, the amount of money people are making in these retail establishments is appalling. Yeah, but you motherfuckers lose money. Lose money. Mm. The suppliers are not making any money. Who's actually making money here? Mm. There's only one company that's making money, and yep. that's the big retailer. Yes. Yeah, and only less than 1% of people in the MLMs are making the money in that system. Okay. And they're justifying it by saying we're trying to give the, the end consumer a fair deal. Mm. But that's like saying, hey, buy shirts from some eastern country that is using child labor to make the shirts. Hey, we're giving the children something to do and we're keeping the prices down for you. Well, that's not a way to justify low prices as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's crazy how these people can claim to have a moral compass and seemingly be logical and be so close. Like he's able to recognize, he's able to look deeper into corporate America and, and criticize the child labor element of it and the you know bad quality and whatever, whatever, whatever. And you know, low pay, but doesn't seem to be able to apply the same thing to his, uh, his own thing that he's advocating for. There's a great quote that goes, I'm going to find it. The quote goes, it's by Upton Sinclair. The quote goes, it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on his not understanding it. This is what we are seeing here with Richard to a T. So when I look at an illegal or an unethical, let's call it, pyramid scan, the retail stores for me are right at the top of the list. Yeah, wow. You know? And I wow. A pyramid scheme, a pyramid scam, retail stores are at the top of the list. What a fucking idiot. Pyramids are everywhere. Mm, so mm, banks mm. are pyramids. Yeah. Oh, banks are pyramids. You got the chairman. You got the board of directors. You got the. Oh, you got the chairman. You got the board of directors. And let me guess, Richard, the people who are on the board of directors of the bank, they only got to that rank because they recruited uh, regional managers under them. And then those regional managers got to be regional manager because they recruited branch managers under them, right? And their and their salary was locked until they recruited more people, right? You are so fucking dumb. You, me, and God know that that is not true. People in corporate America, people at the bank, people at Walmart are not having their pay dictated based on how many people they recruited into a mathematically impossible endless chain system. So fucking dumb. This is a grown man. This guy's old enough to be my grandpa. How embarrassing to say something so fucking stupid, Richard. Wake up. The people working in, in the bank and then you've got the customers. Mm. So. Pyramids are everywhere, but mm. it's what people do with these pyramids mm. that, for me, is what makes it ethical or unethical. Yes. Well, there's a pyramid. And then what a smug fucking cuck. And there's a scheme. Exactly. So the pyramids exist everywhere, and the scheme is something that's, there's an illegal element to what they're doing within their business. So I know that we're going to discuss this later. I don't mm. know when you want to bring it up, but we've mm. got this diagram. Yes. Which shows what makes a pyramid mm. an ethical mm. business versus an illegal scam. Yeah. And you just need to let me know what yeah. you want so, to So, I mean, that's one of the that. questions we got through social <clears> media is that this. Thank you, Claire Licious. Appreciate you. Hope your vacation was good. I asked, what, what are the ways in which a, um, a multi-level marketing business is an illegal pyramid scheme? We'll go through. We've actually got. I wish I was sitting there while they're filming this. I would have this guy turning tomato red. A very nice um, uh, image that we want to display on the screen. You'll, you'll see it soon. No way. Ah. You're a fucking fool. 
Billions and wow. billions. Thanks, Marco. Julie Anderson, bro. What a goat. The goat. Julie Anderson, man. Let me see what Julie did here. Ten memberships. Holy boy. Heather C. Anna Marie Fella. Jack. Ari. Sarah. Z. Somnia. Laura Pollack. Or Polak. And Kimberling. Thomas Durham. And Chasms were all gifted memberships by Julie. Julie, you are the GOAT. Thank you so much, Julie. For real. Really, 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 really appreciate you, Julie. Wow. That's so amazing. The whole chat finna be green, y'all. Amazing. Yeah, banks are pyramids. What a fucking idiot. An unethical versus a legal scam. So you admit it's a scam. Well, every business is a scam. Um, when we get to that, that question. Now, this is why. So, so why, why do Thank you, Gary. multi-level marketing businesses then have, have such a bad reputation? Let me guess what he's going to say. Oh, MLM businesses have such a bad reputation because uh, there are people who don't work hard in it and then they get they lose their money and then they, they go in they're negative. That, that's what I'm guessing he's going to say. Uh, yeah. If retail stores are pyramids, you must be really shitty at your job because their members are all vastly more successful than any other pyramid to ever exist except the ones at Giza. Hilarious. Look, there's a couple of reasons okay. for this. Okay, the one is obviously, as I said, there yep. are people doing unethically moral and illegal things. Um, so that is the one thing. He is the Bob Proctor of MLM. Actually, Bob Proctor was the Bob Proctor of MLM. So glad he's dead. But, I mean, this guy's still, still young enough to have a few more decades of scamming in him. And I just need to state here clearly mm. that it, and I'm looked at the camera here because. Yeah, look at the camera. Let's see what you're going to say. It is every person individually, their responsibility to look at the business and make sure what that company is doing is legitimate and legal and ethical. Because we're busy involved in a court case at the moment mm -hmm. where these guys had a pyramid scam going with uh, Bitcoin. Yes. And the guys have sconded with the Bitcoin. He's mm -hmm. gone to some South American country. Mm. I think he's talking about one coin. With, I don't know, how many, how many Bitcoin uh, did he take with? It was said in the press, it was 17,000. 17,000 Bitcoins mm. he's just absconded with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a full-on pyramid scheme. But what's happening is the government, South African government, has now decided to open up um, criminal cases against not only the guy who owned the company, yeah. but against the people who joined that business. Mm. And, okay, and they're saying that, and it's, it's in the law, and I think it's law all, all around the world, but specifically in South Africa, yeah. they're saying that it is illegal to partake in an illegal pyramid scam or to perpetuate that scam, yes. and that you are criminally liable if you are a member of that team. Well, then someone should arrest you, Richard. Mm. So you've got to be super careful. Dick is short for Richard, by the way. About what you joined. Okay, so the first thing is that there are people doing unethical things out there, and they're doing it all over the place. There's unethical people in property, there's unethical people in holidays, there's unethical people all over the place, mm. and there's unethical people here. So it's up to you to make sure that the job is, is ethical. And then the second thing that I find is that the people who are introducing you to the business are not 100% truthful. Okay. So what happens is there's this real pressure to sign up agents. Mm. You need to go out and you need to sign up five agents who then sign up five agents mm. who then sign up five agents. Before you know it, you've got seven billion people in your team. You can retire <laughs> and buy yourself an island. Well, the irony of him saying this sort of like sarcastically is that we just watched several videos of him explaining the business model that literally shows them like doing that. That's not how it works. Yeah. So the messaging from the company, and if you go to an Avon meeting and you speak to their people when you want to sign up as an Avon girl, the messaging is you need to sell the product. So step number one, you sign up as a, as a business partner, IBO, whatever they call it, and then you learn how to sell the product. So the problem is that people who are introducing you to the business don't tell you, hey, there's some work to be done here. Yes. They use the sentence. All you have to do is. All and, you have to do is. And it's easy. And it's easy. I've done it. Exactly. I'm doing it. Exactly. Yes. So what they should be telling you though is, look, we're going to... Name one that's doing it the way you describe, Richard. We're going to make some money together. There's a great way to make a living. Your job is to make... It's your responsibility to make sure the job is legit. And it's my responsibility to spend my entire life hiding that it's not legit. Exactly. It's like when Dominic Izzo during our debate was like, if I went to the strip club and the stripper told me that she loved me and I spent all my money on her, whose fault is that? It's like, dude, it's such a nonsense logical fallacy false equivalent stupid fucking thing to say and mind you i get so exhausted doing this because scott whether it's scott and peter or dominic Izzo or richard here I, i'm dealing with people who are old enough to be my father or in some case my grandfather and i'm having to explain simple fucking business concepts to them that they are too dumb or too ignorant or too unwilling to even fucking understand obviously you have to put in some work laura says as an ex-avon girl that's not true there you go. Thank you, Laura. 
Now, how much do you want to earn? Mm. Let's say you wanted to earn $1,000 a month. Yes. Well, the question that I would ask you, if I was trying to recruit, recruit you, mm -hmm. to earn $1,000 a month in the traditional way through a job, mm -hmm. what would you actually have to do? Mm. Show up. Show up and clock in. Clock in and clock out. That's what you'd have to do. I know where he's going with this too, by the way. He's doing the Dominic Izzo. Well, let's define success. Well, what's success mean to you? Well, I'd have to work hard at it. Day okay. In, day out. What time would you have to get to work? I'd my mother-in-law brought her upline to my house to recruit me and start asking me if I wanted to retire my husband. Insane. It was not by selling $5 bubble baths. Exactly. Tex, Ming, and Dick losing fortunes radio would be sicker. I agree. Thank you, Kip Kirby. Yeah, he's going to talk about what time would you have to wake up? Well, with this, you have time freedom. No, you don't. You're working all the fucking time. Get in at 8 o'clock. What time do you leave? And I leave at 5. Okay. Would you have to, uh, would you be able to take holidays whenever you like? What do you mean? Okay, go ahead. Not whenever I like, no. What would happen if you didn't feel like going into work? <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go into work. I'll have to, to do it. Work. I'll have to put it in So the there's work. an element of discipline in there. Yes. So the thing is, when you join a multi level marketing, whether you're doing it part time or full time, mm. you have to accept that if you're going to make a success of this thing, there's an element of work. Yes. Now, if I'm not telling you that, yes. then it's on me mm. that you, you don't know what is required. Sorry. Whether you tell him that there's going to be a lot of work required or not, Richard, you're still selling him a scam. Tell that. I, I, I hate this hard work bullshit that they bring up in MLM so much because tell that to people who were in MLMs for years. Julie Anderson is here in the chat. She was in Monet for five years and gave it her all, spent money 24-7 messaging like people uh, so many people every day on Facebook to the point where Facebook blocked her from sending new messages. Don't tell me it's about hard work. It's not about fucking hard work. You're going to see too, in my interview with Doug Brooks, he talks about joining an MLM is like buying a lottery ticket to a lottery whose winner was already announced yesterday. Enpaz gifting a membership to Dylan Brooks. Thank you, Enpaz. You're fucking poor. Thank you, bro. Success by Dom equals possibly being able to pay your bills. No kidding. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> it's on me that Thank you don't you know what's going on. So yes. I need to tell you, hey, then the second thing is I need to help you to make sure you succeed. Mm. Now, traditionally, the way that we do it is we say... Gifting another membership. I take responsibility. To, to Thank you, Enpaz. Thank you. Oh. To our clients, listen, you need to have videos on how to sell the product, on how to show the compensation plan, on how to invite people to the meetings, etc. And then what happens is if I recruit you, you and I should sit and watch the video together. Then we should have some sort of question and answer. Mm. Then we should role play how to sell the product until we know how to sell it. Then I should take you out to see one of your clients where you watch me sell the product to your client. Then we go together and we do the, the, the presentation together. Then you go and you do the presentation and I watch you. Mm. And then you go and do the presentation. But there's no expectation of you doing nothing and making money. So are you going to meet with people to sell the product or to do a presentation to recruit them? Now that's the first phase. You need to learn to sell the product because if you can't sell the product, how do you teach people to sell the product? And if the product isn't being sold, then you don't have a business. You know, if all you're doing is building this network. There's a saying, if you don't know what the product is, you're the product. If people are consuming the product mm -hmm. and everybody's hoping to make a buck, yes. you don't have a business. You've got to Meek, I'm convinced at this point you don't have memberships turned on. Pyramid. Yes. So the first thing is that I need to teach you how to sell the product so that if you never recruited a single person in your whole life, you'd be able to make a living out of this. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just, it's managing the expectation. And that is something that's the company owner, the business owner, will have to do and feed into the network. Yes. Through those training videos and setting that expectation. Yes, we want to recruit people because we can build our teams. But you have to manage expectation to know there is work that still goes into this. Yes. You have to work in order, like exactly. any other business. Absolutely. 100%. Mm. And then the problem is, I don't tell you this stuff. Mm. I recruit you, so all you have to do is sign up five people, they sign up five people, before you know it, we're on an island in the, in the Seychelles. <laughs> That's what they all do, though. They're saying this for, like, the sake of covering their own ass, but they, again, Richard, you, me, and God know that it's not, that's not what's going on. I take on. responsibility. That's not the truth. Eliza gifting a membership to all-around player maker. You get a mod, you get a mod. I love it. And so you join. because One day, Meek. You think, wow, I want to be on an island in the Seychelles. That mm. sounds like a cool thing to do. Mm. Then after six months, you've earned no money. Yeah. Nothing's come of this. Everybody who you try to recruit doesn't want to join because they know that you're lying to them. You don't yeah. buy an, a, an island in the Seychelles doing nothing. Yeah. And so nobody joins your business. Six months down the road, you don't have anybody in your team. You've made no money, so you leave. Mm. And then what do you do? Do you go out and tell everybody, yes, I'm useless, I couldn't make this thing no, work? of course not. No, well, Never obviously not. So what do you yeah. do? Yeah. You say this pyramid story is a scam. Mm. I oh, yeah.
yeah, it's it's the distributor's fault. They didn't work hard enough. Join this. Exactly, Julie. Exactly, you called it. The company didn't make a cent. They mm -hmm. promised me the world. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then not only do you say that that company is a scam, you then say that the entire industry is a scam. Sure. The entire industry is a scam. Sure. So you paint companies it's worse than a scam. It's a cult. It's a crime syndicate. It's like Avon and Tupperware with the same brush. Mm. Rainbow, Forvac. Yes. There's Mary Kay. There's just hundreds of companies out there that are ethical and completely above board and selling amazing products, giving amazing value for money. Mm. And you just, the industry is just rotten. Not one of those companies that he named could I, could I not find an equivalent in quality and cheaper in price product on Amazon. I guarantee it. It's yeah. rubbish. It's a scam. And then you'll get onto social media and you'll just be out there spewing poison about the industry where the vast majority of companies. No, Richard, this video that you're spewing is fucking poison. Eliza, thank you for gifting that membership. Another one. Hey, Meek, you'll get one eventually. Janie Heron got this one, but maybe Meek will get one eventually. Aww. Joey K says, if I still have to work a lot, but it's not guaranteed I make money, why wouldn't I just have the normal job where I am guaranteed to make money? Exactly. Just, again, logical fallacy. I take responsibility. By, by Richard here. Thank you, Eliza. And th Stephanie Robinson, congrats on the mod ship. <laughs> I take you know, responsibility. Do legitimate legal and ethical business. Mm -hmm. And it's something that in the MLM space we actually fight against all the time. And yeah. I, I oh, yeah, you're such a hero. Just like Gary Cornegay from Primerica calling into my live stream, being like, man, Marco, I really respect what you do taking down these pyramid schemes because I fight pyramid schemes just like you. He's in fucking Primerica. We've got clients who come to us and say, we don't want to let anybody know that we are doing a multi level marketing play. Oh, yes. We're actually going to call it an affiliate play. Mm. Well, it's just a lie. Yeah. You know, first of all, I say to them, you know, if you don't want to be in multi-level marketing, then we don't want you as a client. Mm -hmm. Because from our perspective, this is the most ethical, the most moral, the most fantastic business. Richard, I think you are a terrible fucking person. I can't imagine how many people you have screwed over in your lifetime. You're an old man. I can't imagine how many people you have fucked over by selling them this bullshit. You can be it. As long as you don't do anything that's, mm. you know, gray area as long as we keep everything clean mm. this is an amazingly ethical business yes the people who should be making the money are making the money mlm people i would say they do cloud chase me actually yeah i often get mlm people like trying to be my friend to be like mine's different it's fucking insane wow no way 10 get another 10 gifted memberships bro Billions and billions. Paul. Marco. Marco. Wow. More Marco. Let's see who got him. Do you like me? <laughs> Let's see who got him. Thank you for that. Uh, Kilikina. Wow, that's amazing. Kilikina, you are the GOAT. Of the girl, Muriel, Liana, Rebecca, B Fun, Babylon, 7 Eleven Manager, Year of Logs, Dither, Dither, Jennifer Boone, uh, Guaranteed Meek doesn't have his shit turned on, bro. Meek is doing this on purpose so that people keep gifting memberships, hoping to give him one, just to saturate my pockets. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm just playing. Meek, fix your shit, you know? Uh, thank you for that, Kilakina. You are a G. Meek, you deaf don't have gifts turned on. This is impossible. I'm saying. Sorry, Meek. Even Stevens, I don't think anyone is censoring you. What are you, what are you commenting? I'm not seeing any comments being deleted in the chat. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I see your comments. What, what, are you, what are you commenting about that you're saying is getting deleted? Alicia, no worries. Appreciate you. Scott likes the video and says that MLM is the most ethical business. Make it make sense. Yep. And yet believes... Think about this. Scott Johnson is so dumb. He believes Amway is a pyramid scheme, but that he thinks, but he thinks that MLMs are legitimate businesses, even though M every MLM is a copy-paste uh, spin on Amway. Make that make sense. The products have to be good because nobody wants to scam their friends. So if the products are not good, people are going to feel they, mm. they're scamming their friends. They're going to drop out. Yeah. Nobody wants to feel like that. So the products in our industry typically are absolutely excellent. Mm. Typically, the products in MLM are absolutely excellent. Bitch, where? Literally, where? They're not cheap because we pay fair um, income mm. for the work done. Mm. We're not like a, a, a big retail store who's... Really? Fair income for the work done? 
So when Eliza was in Monet selling $160 worth of product and made what? Was it $16 or whatever she said it was? That's fair? Paying bottom dollar yes. to keep the costs right on the ground so right. that they can go with their little halos out there in the street and tell everybody how they are keeping prices down. We're not like that. The people who are doing the work get well paid. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're with me. Yeah. So, so that's from my perspective was what's what's key in this in this mm. whole thing. Have a great product. Teach your people how. Peter PP tingles. Here's all of my retail sales for the week. Exactly. Thank you. Wow. Even Steven's gifting five memberships. Okay, Meek. I know for a fact now that Meek doesn't have his uh, gifting turn on because E1C1 was gifted a membership, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't even subscribe to me anymore. E1C1 freak juice flip. The MLM police and Jay got gifted memberships. People are now getting gifted memberships who, like, I, I'm convinced don't even subscribe to me. How to sell it so that they don't go out there and say, hey, this is an unethically moral business. Yes. Yeah. So I think then a, a key tip for anyone, a potential network marketing member, when assessing what MLM business you want to get involved in, you have to be looking at this business and say, are they doing anything unethical? Let's see. How do I identify a pyramid scheme? I'm so curious. Let's look. Is, um, so Caleb, I hope this is up broadcasting to everyone. Um, okay, cool, fantastic. So Richard, I just want us to go through the various elements here. In that, is this a, ske a scheme? Or Let me look at this. Let me move myself out of the way here so I can actually analyze this. Eliza, don't say we should chill on memberships for a bit. Don't say that. I'm deleting that. Is this a legitimate legal multi-level marketing business? Yeah, so I've created it as a pyramid because I think it's actually quite fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, you think it's fun. So comp plan, retail commission. Oh, he's explaining the differences. Okay, let's look. I'm just, I'm a big fan of pyramids, by he the is. way, because I think hierarchical structures are everywhere. Yes. I'm a big fan of pyramids. What an idiot. You know, there's, there's not uh, a- Beyond, I hope you saved this video. A, a, a single organization that I can identify that doesn't have a hierarchical structure that's not pyramid mm -hmm, in shape. Mm -hmm. So I love pyramids, so- Something having a hierarchical structure doesn't make it a pyramid scheme, Richard. So when people say this is not so is the royal family a pyramid scheme because you have the king and the queen and then you have the prince and the princess and you have the duke and the duchess what a fucking dumb thing to say but a pyramid i know it is a pyramid yes. i'm happy with that it's not a scheme though and yes. how do you know if it's a scheme or not and and that's where we look at so the first thing that you'll see number one point number one is having a simple compensation plan mm -hmm. so the thing is that 90 percent of the okay so having a simple compensation plan well we just went through several different videos where you show Literally mind-bogglingly, mind-numbingly complex compensation plans. So one point for me, zero for you. Time. When I see a simple compensation plan, it is an indication that the person does not understand multi-level marketing. Mm. And it's also an indication that... Oh, it ha oh, you want it to be complex. They're probably an illegal pyramid. Oh, if... <laughs> so if the compensation plan is simple, it's probably an illegal pyramid. How fucking dumb. Okay. And that's because in a simple plan you can't actually a, a, attend to all of the different areas. So you can't have, in a simple plan, they generally don't have a retail commission. In a simple plan, they're generating um, sales. They're saying, well, we give out 20% on level one and 5% on level two, and they just give out level-based commissions. Mm. In a simple plan, people earn money for doing nothing. And what we find is that that attracts all the wrong kind of people. So the first thing that I look at is if the plan is... Dominic Izzo differentiates between pyramid scheme and pyramid scam. D dude, these people, are their brains are broken. It's too simple then they generally that is a sign that there's something going on there that's not always but generally it's a sign that there, there's something that you should be worried about and digging deeper in and mm. we'll get into some of the other areas that we that we why we say insane bro i'm skipping ahead this is ridiculous okay he's breaking down the pyramid let me go past this because this is obviously fucking nonsense oh here dsa i want to hear him talk about the dsa we got a good product mm -hmm. and then the last thing is being a member of the dsa you know the direct oh yeah, if you're a member of the DSA, you're not a pyramid scheme, even though companies that get shut down for being pyramid schemes and are members of the DSA, like what do you have to say about those? Many of the companies that were shut down for being pyramid schemes were members of the DSA. Oh, let me guess, they were just a bad apple, right, Richard? Fucking idiot. Direct Selling Association actually comes and investigates your business. Mm -hmm. They send an expert in and they look at everything. They pick through everything. They see anything you're doing illegal, you have the opportunity to fix it. If you don't fix it, you don't become a member of the DSA. So if you're boo fucking who joining a business and you're uh, an MLMer, you mm -hmm. want to join a company, yes. Then being a member, the company is a member of the DSA. You know that's a huge 
star on their on their chest. And if you're a company who's getting into the MLM space, then you need to join the DSA. You need to be a member there because they will tell you if there's anything untoward going on. Mm. Okay, you've got so, some final yes, questions there. The irony, the DSA will tell you if there's anything illegal or untoward going on. The DSA, literally the fucking mafia defending organized crime. You want to zap through well, them? We, we do still have a bit of time. We've got 15 minutes. Um, Another question that came in from social media, which is leading into what you've just said now, is who governs the MLM industry internationally uh, or, and locally? And what are the consequences of falling foul of the laws? Okay, so uh, the DSA is one of the main organizations. And then in various different countries, there are governmental organizations who are responsible for the legalities. Um, okay. South Africa is the Department of Trade and Industries, but around yes. the world, there's different organizations. Now, if you get in contact with the local DSA, there's DSAs in all countries, mm. they will be able to tell you who the local authorities are, and they'll be able to give you access to the local laws. Okay. And so, what, what happens there? How, how does it happen? Once you've made contact with them, do they come into your business and do an audit? Yeah, they okay. do. So when you apply for it, we did it with when I was running Acorn Kids. We yes. were members of the DSA, and I applied for the... Acorn Kids. The DSA membership. Mm -hmm. And the chairman actually came and saw me, and they went through our whole business, saw what products we were selling, etc. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we, we were an associate partner for a year. Okay. At the end of the year, they reevaluated the company. We were still doing everything ethically and yes. morally, and then they made us a full members of the DSA. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. so that's a process. Yeah, so it's okay. a, yeah, they don't just take you on. So yes. people who've got a membership, yes. they've obviously been through a process, and the DSA has vetted them. They, they don't just take anyone on. Yeah. yeah. And, and what happened? You guys have to recognize the DSA operates in the interest of MLMs. It is their job to perpetuate the fraud. happens if, if, if you're running a, a multi-level marketing business and you are falling foul of the laws, now a permit scheme, what happens to you then? Just you go to jail. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's criminal offense. Yes. So it's not something to be taken lightly. Sure. And you might not even be, be aware of it. Mm. What? Why not review? I would recommend that you read the book Freedom of Mind, which talks about how to deal with a friend who's in a pyramid scheme. The key, the key theme is empowering people to think critically for themselves. You're, this person who, uh, your friend of yours or relative, has already been sold on emotion and on pipe dreams. So you're not going to beat them with facts. It's not facts that got them to join the MLM company. It's not data, it's not statistics. You're gonna do nothing by saying 99.7% of people lose money and blah. No, you need to empower them to think critically for themselves. Do an exchange of information. Say, okay, show me a video or whatever that, you, that made me want to, uh, that made you wanna join. And then maybe you can watch a video that I can show you that, and just you know, try to express your concern from a place of love. What happens is the guys, the, in, in South Africa in particular, they come in, they just shut you down. Okay. So if they suspect, suspect. Okay, no, nothing's proven yet. They suspect you're running an illegal scam. They come and look at what you're doing. Your product isn't worth the money or your compensation plans, one of these simple pyramid style compensation plans or your front. Amway South Africa general manager is the chairperson for the DSA there, insane. You're front loading or whatever. They have a, a checklist. If you're doing something wrong there, sorry. We think you're running an illegal scam. Shut down immediately. So you're not allowed to trade. Then, as you know, these government organizations are highly efficient, extremely efficient. <laughs> so yes. they really? Are they? They investigate you. And you can imagine how quick that is. Yes. Because of their efficiency, yeah, they manage to get it. What do you mean they're efficient? They take years to run their investigations and shut down these scams. By the time one of these MLMs is shut down, three more have taken its place. Yeah, <laughs> they, can, they can easily get it done within two years. Yes. <laughs> now, what, you, what happens during that two years is you don't trade. Mm. Your stock sits on the shelf. Mm gets old, mm. expires. Your network leaves, obviously. They, why would they stay? Yeah. And so your business crashes. Then they come back to you and say, okay, we've investigated. If you change these two items, we'll let you start trading again. But by then you're gone. And to fight them in court is expensive because you're not just fighting somebody. You're mm. fighting the government. Yes. And so they've got <laughs> deep pockets and long arms. I mean, yes. how do you fight them? So it's extremely important that you get expert help to make sure that you're doing nothing that falls foul of the laws because mm. you don't want to be shut down on a whim. And the problem is, imagine you're running an awesome MLM company. Now what happens is people are flooding to your companies from other networks because they see your opportunity, they love your product, they like your comp plan, they like you, they like your training, so they join your company. Now the leadership in these other companies are concerned because their people are, are, are deserting the ship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what they do is they're going to report you to the DSA and they're going to report you to the DTI and they're going to report you to the authorities saying, hey, this company is doing something illegal. Mm. Not because you're doing something illegal, mm. because they don't want to lose their network. So wow. you're running a binary pyramid scam compensation plan or you do whatever. Mm. So it's, I mean, it's highly wow. unethical. And then the guys come and inspect you. So you can be absolutely 100% guaranteed that if your business is successful, you will be 
audited mm. by the authorities, guaranteed. So you need to be damn careful. Mm. <laughs> Everything oh. needs to be above board. Oh, absolutely. Imagine any legitimate business having to do an hour-long podcast to explain why. What's the difference between our very legitimate thing and this other thing that's a pyramid scheme? And it's so they're so similar. It's such a fine line that we have to spend an hour explaining the difference using false equivalences and mistruths and lies and nonsense. As as a key takeout there, how would how would someone go? Is, is it the the DSA that you'd have to get to to come in and consult? No, they would do audits, but you'd actually have to get someone externally to come in and uh, consult on what the legal. Yeah, look, the DSA will, will be able to put you onto consultants in all of the different areas who can help okay. you. So the DSA definitely has partners. To recruit people and get paid to do so. Yeah. So. Yeah, we kind of, kind of addressed that. We you, have addressed you it. Obviously, yes. it can be a service and it can be a product. That does Absolutely insane. I want, to watch, uh, I want to watch this one. Well, we might have to save this one for another episode. Rebuking the top 10 MLM hater comments. Haters, you know, amazing. Let's see. All right, let's let's watch uh, one of the shorter ones. Top MLM hater comments for one. Thank you to company owners operating within this lucrative multi-level marketing space. I'd like to uh, thank our sponsors, Net. And this episode possible because today in this episode marketing space, I'd like to uh, thank our sponsors, Net Ready, for making this episode of my awesome. How's this topic? Here we go. Well, it's if you go and have a look, um, anti MLM is trending all over the. What up, Lily Lucky? Place. It always is. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Because there, there are gray areas that surround this this industry, and there are a lot of people that you know don't support it. But it is the most powerful route to market on this planet, bar none. It's the most powerful. It's the most powerful retail market. Direct sales makes up less than one percent of all retail in North America. Objectively wrong. You know, I enjoy you know, uh, debunking the false equivalences that people in MLMs make, but I'm always stunned when they have the fucking balls to just say an outright lie. Yeah, look, there's, there's obviously people who play fast and loose with the truth, and mm. that damages the, the industry as a whole. Sure. Um, but, it, you know, it, you've got to actually understand that when you get into this industry, you're going to have to deal with that, but you need to make sure that your company is staying completely above board with everything they're doing. Okay, so I've scoured the internet and I found what I see as the top 10 uh, hater comments or the, the anti-MLM comments. Okay, hit me. I wanna go through them and I wanna get your feedback on all of the stuff. Okay, number one, you ready? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So MLM businesses rely on recruiting and not selling. Well, that is a massive problem, hey? There's a lot of companies that create a recruit heavy um, compensation plan. And that is a Hello, we just watched this guy go through a bunch of recruit heavy compensation plans. Problem, so people who don't like that are completely right. That is, it, it's, it should be illegal. It actually, for the most part, is illegal. Mm. And the reason for that is if the only way you can make money is for recruiting. If I have to, let's say I have to recruit five people. I recruit those five people, I make money. But those five people are sitting at the bottom of the pyramid, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, sure. And the only way they can make money is recruit five people. Yeah. This is my point. Where are you going with this? And now you've got 25 people sitting on the, on the, at the bottom of the uh, pyramid. So you've got six people who've made money, 25 people who haven't made money, and who cannot make money without recruiting people. It's almost like he gets it. He's almost there, he almost gets it. So now you get 125 people at the bottom and there is always a bottom of the pyramid, mm, always. Mm. So if you are relying on recruiting to build your business, well obviously there's going to be the vast majority, 50 to 60% of your people who will never make a cent, about 30% of your people who won't even break even, they'll make something, and a small- Those are generous numbers, that's not true. 99 will lose. Small percentage. 99 will lose and 80% have to lose. You will actually make money out of it. So that's a pyramid scheme. Sure. And so I'm 100. So that's a pyramid scheme. And yet he uses the exact same five by five example I use in my why making money in an MLM is impossible. What he just described uh, is a pyramid scheme that has no product. So basically a Ponzi scheme, right? So the same thing applies to MLM though. Like he said, there's always going to be a bottom. If you recruit five, well, now you're on the top and you have five below you who have no one below them. If they recruit five, you have a bottom. The bottom is always going to be bigger. The bottom now has 25. So the way that they legitimize this is by, well, we have a product and all those recruits, even if they're on the bottom layer, they can sell a product, but we'll just pay them such a negligible, insignificant commission that unless they recruit, it won't go up. Hence, the you can't make money without recruiting. But we're not, be, we're not paying them to recruit. Still, it's a scam. 
100% in agreement with them. If there's a company... So much backpedaling, like he's intentionally trying to confuse his listeners. Exactly. That's, that's recruit heavy. That's not a business you want to be part of. And it certainly is. It might not be illegal, but damn, it's very setting very close to the mm. wind. Yeah. First and foremost, push that product. Well, the MLM is a route to market for your product. Mm. Okay? Not true. Right. MLM is not a pyramid. Not true. You know what's a route to market for your product? Amazon, Walmart, Target. It's like him. Imagine this guy was sitting here saying, well, you know, Blockbuster is a, is a way to market your movie rentals or DVDs sales. You'd be like, no, actually, it's 2023. We have Netflix. We've been had Netflix and streaming and, you know, all these on demand or all, all these streaming services for years now. That's basically what he's saying. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a means of marketing your product. It's a route to market for your product. But people, even if that was true, people wouldn't be buying from it. From a scheme where you try and siphon money. Yeah, first and foremost, push that product. Okay. Right. MLM is not a pyramid scheme where you try and siphon money from a lot of people and pay it to a few. Yes, it is. So your first thing should be there should be a, um, a, a retail commission and there should be a volume bonus. Yeah. Which means if I'm selling this product, I should be able to make money purely by selling this product yep. without recruiting a single person. Yeah, but we'll just pay you so low and tell you you need to recruit, build your business. MLM is an obfuscated market. So true. And if I sell a lot of it, I should make a lot of money. If I sell a little bit, I make a little bit of money. Yeah. And now I can actually go out there without recruiting anybody and I can make money selling the product. And if you have a look at the Tupperwares and the Avons and the Amways, well, maybe not Amway so much, but well, Amway as well, because they're mm. quite product. Uh, you got to be careful with Amway because some of the people. See, he caught himself. Amway is the only reason y'all are even here. Amway is the only reason you have a, a data MLM data business, Richard. Watch it. Watch your fucking ass. Tends to focus just on recruiting and not on actually selling the product. But Am Wow. Crazy that he says that. Amway is your daddy, Richard. Amway's got amazing products. Mm. So mm. those people in the industry that focus on selling the products do very, very well. Yeah. And they do have a, a, a rich retail um, commission, commission that gets paid out. Yeah. Rich retail commission. Tell that to Scott Johnson. Hey, Scott, how do you feel about this video? The other one you really liked, but this one, I wonder. So that's where you need to be looking. So if you're joining an MLM business, the first thing you need to say to yourself is, can I make a living just selling the product? And if the answer is no, then stay away from the business. Awesome. Okay. Number two, the MLM model makes it impossible to earn money. Yes, correct. The, the haters who say that forget a little piece of the, of the puzzle. Tell okay. me. Yeah. Hard work. Let me guess. It's hard work, right? MLM model makes it impossible to earn money if you do nothing. Right. <laughs> it writes itself, y'all. Okay. Well said. Now, where the challenge comes in is that people will say to you, listen, Stuart, join the business. All you have to do is five, find, find five friends and get them to do the same and you'll be earning a fortune. Now, that's not the truth. Okay. MLM is a micro business, mm. like any business. And if you do nothing in any business, you get nothing or nothing. Yeah. So if you choose a business that's got a great product that you can relate to, where there's a compensation plan. Nonsense. Where you can Let's open skip it ahead. Up. What's the next question? The haters who are saying that, they've been introduced by people who are saying it's our fault. Yeah. Sprouts guarantee you of that to earn money. Then playing roulette. Yes. Here, let's look. Let's look. Uh, MLM businesses offer worse odds than playing roulette. That's true. That's the 2011 Consumer Awareness Institute study by the late John Taylor. I know my shit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if, you, if you think you're going to put your money in yeah. and, and something's going to come It'll back come. to you, yeah. well, there's not a chance of that happening. So, yeah. uh, Totally, totally, totally twisting the point. He, he admits, yeah, you do have better chance playing roulette than making money in MLM. But again, it comes down to your work. Your odds of roulette is what? One in 32 that your number is going to be. He's created a company that provides tools for building companies. Carbon copy clones. Yep. Yes. Something yeah. like that. 31. One, 31 yeah. Whatever yeah. it is. There's also the green. green. Yeah. Is that 31 I with think, the green? I think it's 15, 15 and 1. Okay. 31. Yeah, I think so. I don't play roulette. So. Yeah. At least you got a 1 in 31 chance of yeah. your number coming up. At least. Let's, well, holy fuck. If you join an MLM business and don't work, then you've got a 0% chance of earning money. What a scammer calls that they make how many phone calls how many uh, pitches uh, yeah. is uh, MLM, MLM businesses incentivize their reps to buy from them look that used to happen that doesn't happen anymore that doesn't happen anymore hey beyond save this one that does happen still in every MLM you could show me 
there is PV that gets attributed to your total calculation of your um, PV and GV to see how to see what rank you are, to see how much commission you get for your own purchases. Absolutely, every MLM company still does it. Well, yeah. So now you have a situation um, worldwide where there's some very, very, very strict rules around um, people actually buying a product to um, ramp up the business. Yeah. What is certainly legitimate is that if you are selling a product, if you're selling, let's say you're selling Ford cars, mm. and you drive a Mazda, yeah. You know what is that message going out there? Sure. So that's a horrible message. So mm. you know, I would be saying to my network, look. If what? So so it does incentivize. So you do want people to buy the product. If you build, if you work for Ford, but you drive a Mazda, it looks bad. Okay, so this is this comes back to the whole be a product of the product. How are you going to sell it if you don't use it yourself? So you so you are admitting. If you're selling the products, you need to use the products. If yep. you don't believe in the products enough to use them, mm. then you shouldn't be part of the network. Yeah. So in in my opinion, beyond don't just save them to a playlist. Like actually download the files of them because they're going to delete this. In the fact that people are using the products and consuming the products, that's a good thing because I know if I owned, let's say I owned a. A restaurant and the chances of me eating out every night at the rest just all these false equivalences instead of answering the fucking question directly you know restaurant next door yeah are zero yeah you know i wouldn't want anybody to see me eating at the restaurant next door because what does that say about yeah, my restaurant? horrible message horrible message yeah so when somebody comes to your home and they go into your bathroom let's say you're an amway distributor they need to see the amway soap on the yeah on, on the counter yeah they need to see when they go into the into the kitchen they need to see the amway cleaning detergents in your yeah. cupboard you know, you need to use the product. Really? Think about that for a second. If you worked at Hot Topic selling clothes as an employee, would you really would you really need people when they come over to your house to see that all your clothes were from Hot Topic? You couldn't have bought clothes from elsewhere? Are the people who come to your house going to get a bad sense of you and your job if they find out that all of your clothes were not from Hot Topic and yet you work at Hot Topic? And I know Richard would probably respond to that and say, but no, Hot Topic isn't your own business. But if it's your own business, you should have a sense of pride around it and be a product of the product. Well, guess what, Richard? MLM isn't your own business either. You don't own dick. So again, it doesn't even make logical sense. It's so easy. The fact, I wonder, I wonder if, I, sometimes I wonder, am I the smartest man in the world? Or are these people just saying shit that is so stupid and so easy to debunk that it's frustrating. Right. Nice. And yeah. so I'm, it's not a case of we are forcing you to buy them. Right. Nobody would force you, you to buy them and no company's allowed to. That's illegal. You should be able to join a business, not buy one of their products and still market them. But you got... Nice, Beyond. Nice, nice. But I mean, where's your faith? If you're not using them, how can you sell them? Yeah. You know, if you don't have the faith to buy the product and use it, then what are you doing? Right. Then go and join another business where you can believe in the product and consume the product and fall in love with the product. Yep. And then if you fall in love with the product, it's very easy to talk to people of about course. it. Of course. Yeah. Because you were referred it anyway. Exactly. Okay. And so that is a stupid comment. Yeah. MLM businesses need to constantly recruit, recruit to replace those who quit. Yes. Oh, he admits it. <laughs> yes. yes. So yes, they do. Yeah. So unfortunately, what I've discovered. Send this to the FTC is that people have got a wishbone, but no backbone. That's it. Okay. But if you go and have a look at the percentages of small businesses that fail outside of MLM, just take most small businesses mm -hmm. fail within the first year, they're gone. People start businesses and they're gone. And the reason is they don't have the ability to push through in the hard times. Sure. Now starting an MLM business, although the entire infrastructure is there and being provided for you, it is still requires a lot of hard work and there's going to be a lot of grind and there's going to be a lot of learning and there's going to be a lot of things that are difficult. But if you want to succeed in any business, you're going to have to go through that pain. And unfortunately, mm. the vast majority of people are not prepared to do it. Yeah. Now, there's... Oh, that's why they quit. Not because they're not making money, right? Mitigation here. When you sign the person up, you need to create the right expectation. Exactly. And we've talked about this. Yeah. If you succeed in this business, it's going to be your effort that succeeds, not mine. Yep. Okay? I'm here to show you what to do, but I'm not here to do the work for you. Mm. Are we in agreement with I that? I agree. My job is I need to get you um, independent as quickly as possible. Do you agree that's a good goal? Yep. Okay? And if you're not working... Do I have permission to come and talk to you and ask you why you're not working and remind you why you got into this business yes, in the first place? Now we create, create this, we now created some sort of expectation where you are succeeding or failing because you are the person who's responsible for making Once again, blaming the victim. That's what this is. This is gaslighting. 
You can believe two parts. We've gone over over ten minutes. Um, so if we can just do. Sorry, y'all. I know the stream is going along, but I need to watch the next part. I need to see this. To company owners operating within this lucrative, MLM reps are unpaid sales reps, not business owners. True. Look at him trying to fucking look at him taking a breath, like winding up to to lie, winding up to create some false equivalence, some logical fallacy to try to explain how it is a business and blah blah blah. Well, they're not unpaid because they're in commission. Yeah. So they're commission only sales reps. Sure. Which is in the traditional sense, yeah. this is what happens. But are they a business owner? Answer the question. But I must be honest with you. I've over the years I've employed a lot of salespeople yeah. in various businesses. I had a big ad agency. Not in one of the companies that I ever uh, um had a sales rep in did I offer to pay him a 40% commission yeah. on every sale that went through the system. Sure. Well, you, that's probably why you don't have the company anymore, isn't it? Why did that business fail? Why do I have to buy the inventory I'm supposed to sell, says Joey K. Well, if you don't, you're not dedicated enough. Why do I also have to keep recruiting and selling products? Everyone is too lazy. Exactly. Now, if you have a look at most... Um, yeah, and Paz. I remember when I worked as a dishwasher and I wanted to quit. My boss reminded me of my whys. Nonsense. Recognized uh, um, MLM companies. You're getting anything between 20 and 40% on every sale. Not true. Now, that is the kind of uh, um, profit margins that you get if you become a reseller for a wholesale company. Yeah. So if I were to massive. resell musical equipment, I would buy it at a less 40 yeah. from the music shop and be able to make a 40% profit on everything I sell. Now within the MLM space, the same deal. You're getting 20% normally in retail commission. You've got some form of vo vo volume bonus, which takes you up to around 40%. So if you work hard, you're making 40%. There's no repping job that would pay you a salary and give you 40%. Where in the world would you find that? It doesn't Impossible. exist. Can you imagine in the you know? traditional business, someone giving away 40% of... Yeah. Of the sales. And how does the happen. how does the boss treat the salesperson? Yeah. They give them a target. Yeah. If you hit the target, we'll give you this commission. Next year, what happens to the target? Yeah, it gets higher. If you hit it, yeah. next year the target's up. Yeah. So if you want to make your, your bonus, you have to hit higher sales. And that's how sales reps work. Now MLM is nothing like that. Yeah. So if you want to treat it like that, well, that's your yeah, but you guys have quotas for recruiting rather than making the sales and selling the making the sale to the recruit prerogative but that's not how it's built at all it's built as a retail wholesale relationship between the supplier which is the mlm company and you as a reseller of that product yeah and then what you're not the reseller of the product you are the customer you think the mlm company is going to take a chance that they're going to lose money on your ability to sell it or not no you buy it you pay into the opportunity so they're all their product cost is already covered and and then some and they make money they don't give a fuck whether you sell it or not. What company says to you, listen, if you join, you can create your own team of salespeople, teach them how to sell the product and go out and generate yourself serious money. Nobody does that. So you cannot say that this is just glorified salesperson. Yeah. Mind you, the question was, are you a business owner? Yeah. Because it's not. Yeah. You know, this is a totally different animal. Okay. Number seven. Doesn't answer the fucking question. Uh, MLM businesses are unregulated. You have no way of knowing if they are fraud or not. True. Look, that is true. Thank you. Okay, so in, in most parts of the world, there's no regulations. And there's many, many people. Didn't he say in the previous video, the longer one we watched, didn't he say that there are regulators everywhere? People out there who do not realize that what they're doing is illegal right. so they think they're doing this right thing by making this a recruit yes. yeah like you richard like you are one of those people the cognitive dissonance is insane heavy business and what they're seeing is the dollar signs you recruit this many people and we're all going to make a lot of money they don't understand the implications so what you got to do before you join an joey k would you be able to scam your way to success in an mlm if you had a, a thousand fake identities no because you would still be having to pay to join on behalf of all of those uh, fake accounts and the amount that you could possibly make even by artificially structuring by artificially structuring your own downline with these thousand fake accounts 
the amount you're going to get paid back by the company as your commission and bonuses and whatever is always, always, always going to be infinitely less than the company made off of those thousand fake accounts joining. It's, you're going to lose money. An eminent business is you've got to get yourself. I would love that in Paz. Educated. You've got to understand what makes a good MLM business, what makes a bad one. What are the things to look out for when you're looking for an MLM business? You know, fall in love with the product. Is there retail commission? Is the product worth the money they're asking? You know, are they s selling tins of canned mm. Cape Town air for 300 bucks a pop? Yes. Well, that's not, that's not good value. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. great business concept, by the way. Yeah, no, 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 we need to get it. <laughs> okay, but the bottom line is that you need to make sure that the business you join intrinsically matches you as a person, matches your personality. Yeah. You love the product, you can make money selling the product, you believe in the product, it's well priced, and there's a compensation plan that is that has a big retail component plus some sort of leadership back end that you can actually build up in the business and, and really generate serious money. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, where you're coming from on that front, that's where I would say the, that's the answer to that is you need to pick the right, the right company. Okay. The bad apples argument, just a long winded way of saying bad apples. MLM businesses damage relationships. Yes. And he's going to say bad apples again. That is so true. Hey? Yeah. So what happens is a person recruits you. Yep. And then they say to you, now what you do is you go and hit on your family and your friends. And you go out there and you're pounding your family and friends to pieces. And eventually they don't even want to talk to you because every time they see you, all you're doing is chirping about the product. Yep. Now there's two reasons for that. One, you are not taking any time to learn about the industry and you just- Blaming you and blaming your upline for not setting your expectations. Going and shooting from the hip. Two, the person who recruited you isn't training you. Exactly. So sad. So sad. Yeah. Now there's a really simple, <sighs> simple solution to this. You go out there and you buy a book from a guy called Eric Waray mm. called Go GoPro. Yep. And you read that book and you apply his principles because he teaches you how to, at any second, go out and find a lead that you can actually sell to a recruit without tapping into your friend and family network at all. Mm -hmm. And so my recommendation is don't go and screw up your relationships. Sure. Go out there and be so successful that your family is asking you, damn, what are you doing? How do I also? That's your advice. Go read Eric Worre's book. It just keeps getting worse somehow. So get in on the right. action here. Yeah, yeah. Don't go and approach your friends and family. You need to become professional enough so that you know how to connect with people outside of the space. And we're talking LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, we're talking so in-person mechanisms. Yeah. And Eric Warre teaches you how to literally generate a lead in a moment. We sent a team of people out, as you know. Yeah. Within a couple of minutes, they generated five leads of people they could talk to. Yeah. It's unbelievable. No, and, and so it's and using his technique. So yeah. get yourself educated and don't yeah. screw up your relationships because you can yeah. and, and people do. Yeah, well said. Uh, number nine is MLM, MLM businesses are by definition pyramid schemes. Yes. Well, no, they're not. Because certainly I wouldn't be in a, involved in a pyramid scheme. I don't get involved in things. that. Oh, yeah, that's what they all say, buddy. Legal. What a pyramid scheme is, a pyramid scheme is a mechanism which is recruit heavy, where the people at the bottom pay to be in and the people above earn money from their joining. Yep. Now, first of all, that is totally illegal. You go to jail for that stuff. It's called a Ponzi scheme, it's called a pyramid scheme, and there's some very strict rules pertaining. pertaining. No, there's not. And B, that's exactly what MLM is. Bro, Richard, in earlier in this live stream where we were looking at your videos explaining the compensation plan and you had the example where Mary goes bronze, then she goes platinum, then she goes diamond. How did she go diamond? By recruiting people, by having people in her downline. And those people had people in their downline. So what you're saying is just wrong. You're lying. You're contradicting your other video. Tiny to that. Now, is it hierarchical nice in nature? It certainly is. So you have a person at the top of the network 
who has people below them doing some work and they might be diamond leaders and then you've got under them you've got rubies and there's more rubies than diamonds and there's more um, team leaders than mm, mm. than rubies etc sure and so the, it is hierarchical in nature because what you need is leadership um but it's no again just babble mindless babble flim flam nonsense to not answer the question different to any company you know in a, in a normal company, you've got a chairman, then you've got the board of directors. No, MLM is not a pyramid scheme because pyramid schemes are illegal. Circular definition, exactly. Directors, then you've got the, the blue collar workers, and then you've got the customers at the bottom, and it's, yeah. it's hierarchical in nature. Yeah. The difference with MLM, though, is anybody can join the business, and within a, a few short years, working hard, can rise to the top ranks. If you join a company, there's no ways that you can join as the sweeper. Um, ah, and get yes, yes. Another way to point out that corporate America is a scam. You will never become the CEO of a company if you start at that company as the janitor. There's so much nepotism going on that the nephew of the owner is going to become the CEO before you, even if you're more qualified. Listen, you might not become the CEO, but you can rise up in a company. You can achieve a better position. You can be promoted. You can get a raise. That's absolutely true. Even in my own life, when I worked at the casino, I was a waiter at the fine dining restaurant for six months. And then I leveraged what I knew about all the top gamblers at the casino. And then I eventually applied for a higher position within the, the casino to be a slot host, which was like a manager position. And I did that because I had the experience from working in the restaurant and getting to know all the top high rollers who I would be having to uh, interact with if I did become a slot host. And that's exactly what got me the job. That's exactly what got me the job. So this is such a exaggerative example. If you're the janitor, you'll never become the CEO. Well, yeah, janitor and CEO, they're in completely different specializations. It's such a ridiculous uh, contrast to draw, but you have a better chance actually of being the janitor and becoming the CEO of whatever the company is than you do making money in an MLM. It's just a fact. The well, chairman. Yeah. The chances He's of He's reading from the script, same shit every time. Yep. Yeah. Zero to nothing. Yeah. Whereas in CEOs aren't really positions that change as often as janitors and there tends to only be one at a time. Exactly. In MLM, you can. You can actually rise to the top. Defines a pyramid scheme and then proceeds to describe the exact same thing about MLMs. But MLMs aren't pyramid schemes. Make it make sense. Exhausting. The business purely by the sweat of your brow. You don't need a degree. You don't need an education. You don't need to be able to talk, be articulate in your speech. You can just rise to the top of the building through hard work and through reading books and through implementing strategies. This is just part of the fear mongering, you know, oh, jobs will never pay you. You'll never get where you want to get to with a job. Jobs are the real scam. Jobs are the real pyramid scheme. College is a pyramid scheme. The bank is a pyramid scheme. Anything with a hierarchical nature is a pyramid scheme. Remember, we watched the video of Guillermo Haro from WFG uh, last week, and he said, your family is a pyramid scheme. Don't you don't you have your father and then your grandfather and then there's you below that and then there's your son fucking stupidity beyond explanation strategies that are taught in this industry okay the last one here is mlm businesses operates like cults yes that's true mlms are commercial cults there are political cults maybe you would think of QAnon as a political cult you know they believe hillary clinton is a lizard that one's actually true and uh, a bunch of other things there are religious cults scientology is a great example of a religious cult and there are you know, financial cults, commercial cults, multi-level marketing would be an example of that. Instead of worshiping Xenu, like in Scientology, you're worshiping uh, the dollar, money. It's a, it's a capitalist, you know, jerk off fantasy, Wolf of Wall Street, uh, baby's first business, Fisher Price, play set, pretend businessman cult. It's exactly what it is. Look, from the outside looking in, that could be, that is a, an argument that could be made. But what happens is you've got five drivers in MLM. You've got um, your product, huge. And because the companies understand the importance of the product, they will spend an inordinate amount of time 
teaching you why this product is incredible. Now, if you're a company owner, Joey K says, quote, rise through the ranks with hard work and implementing strategies. Oh shit, I can't believe I never thought of that. Should I also employ various methods to achieve objectives as well? Yeah, no kidding. Just m mindless, substanceless, flim flam, hogwash, poppycock, gobbledygook, nonsense, whatever word you wanna use, nonsense. To say, saying a whole bunch by, without actually saying anything. Yeah, we're gonna circle back and I'm gonna send this up the chain, you know, lingo bingo. We have BFR bingo, you could have MLM lingo bingo too. You know how like in corporate America they have those jokes where it's like, yeah, we'll circle back and I'll patch you in and as per my last email and we should find some synergy, all these words, all these buzzwords. That's exactly what he's doing. He's not saying anything. Look at those eyes. The lights are on, but nobody's home. There's nothing going on in that brain of his. Wouldn't you like every single person in your organization and every single customer who comes across you to be so completely militantly involved wow. and, and passionate about your product? Of course. Up. Think about what's so toxic about what he's saying here and so just creepy. Most people who have a job, they look at it as exactly that. It is a job. It is a means of making a living. People accept that jobs are not permanent. Even careers are not permanent. Depending on certain factors, your career could not be permanent. Life always has twists and turns. Most people look at their job as exactly that, a job. And they accept that if they quit their job or if they lose their job, they will have to find another one. Having this type of cult-like devotion to your company because of the product, when you don't even have the benefit of being able to say, yeah, I own this. Why would you have pride? Why would you follow it? Why would you be in a cult that worships this product? People in MLM worship MLM, worship their MLM and their CEOs and their uplines and their products more than people who actually genuinely own their own businesses and are passionate about it and it's their life dream. Like, it's insane. So, uh, yeah, just more nonsense from Richard here. Schnarf, schnarf, exactly. What up, Eden Winter? Obviously. Yeah. So companies do that. What's the ask? We don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. Oh my God. Fuck. His brain is just a channel leading to shit on both ends. Yep. They teach the people about every single aspect of their product to that. Pe the people are just besotted with the product. The second thing is commissions. Now, if you can obviously create commissions, Richard, you are a fucking crook. Shame on you. What happens is that the meetings, they will parade the guys who are earning the big money across the stage. And everybody's sitting there thinking, damn, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So there is. I like how the example he keeps giving is a uh, Tupperware. Tupperware, literally self-proclaimed company that's about to go out of business as per their own admission, about to go out of business because nobody wants to join the MLM and the retail sales are not viable. Why? Because re direct selling doesn't exist. That's why. It's obsolete. Is that sense of awe that is in the audience with these people and the guys earn big money, hey? I've seen people sort of a million dollars a month sure. type incomes um, in the States. <sighs> then you've got your incentives where people can get to travel all around the world and they go off and they click of all these leaders go off. And I mean, that can be considered yeah. if you want cult type scenario. Then you've got social and 20% of your people are just driven mm. by this. Dude, this video is only five months old. They uploaded this five months ago, December 15th. He uploads almost every day. Desire. Word salad, yeah. To belong to something amazing. And because you've got a company that's generating huge money, has an incredible product, is taking people all around the world, it attracts a whole group of people who think, man, I want to be part of that. Yeah. Okay? And your final thing is social. Now, uh, rec recognition. Uh, uh, recognition. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people crave recognition. Yeah. When we were running Acorn Kids, we found that recognition was one of the top drivers. People would come to the meetings to get a badge, to get a pat on the back, to walk across the... Yeah, you need that to keep people motivated when they're losing money. Keep them distracted. It's like, uh, what's that thing in, in ancient Rome when the cities were at war, the, the emperor would like throw festivals? You guys know what I'm talking about? Ancient Rome festivals... Uh, during war. Okay, in ancient Roman religion, the Armillustrium was a festival of honor. Blah, blah, blah. 
Am I thinking of the right thing? What was the ancient uh, culture that would have parties and, uh, you know, parades and festivals during wartime to distract people? That's basically what's going on in MLM. Stage Every day. A round of applause from everybody. So mm. those things... Bread and circuses, yeah, you get the idea. If you look at it from the outside and you don't understand what's going on, you can think, oh, well, that looks like a cult. But when you get into the business, you realize it's not. It's recognizing people for the work they do. Wouldn't you like that in your own job? Yeah, of course. It's believing exactly. in your product, heart and soul. Wouldn't you like that in your own job? Yeah. It's having incentive travel. That I like how the audio is now, is now out of sync with the video. Takes you around the world. Wouldn't you like to have that? It's being part of a team that you love being part of. When you get to work, it's like, wow, I can't believe how cool it is to be here. Yeah. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. And it's having a social strategy that helps other people, that is outward looking, that just babbling now. You're inside it, your parents and, <laughs> and become a, a part of his harem. I mean, that's not what's <laughs> happening here. Wait. Yes, it is. Nexium, go back. Of it being a cult, that's an outside in approach but when you're inside it you realize it's not a cult yeah it's not some guy standing up praying and waving a, a cross over your head and you know yeah. making you give up your parents and <laughs> and become a um, part of his harem i mean it literally is in my new primerica video you're gonna see one of the top people who's been in the company more than 10 years talk about how you have to be willing to love your mom from a distance and keep her at a distance so you can pursue your dream because she's negative and she'll thank you one day. And that's not what's <laughs> happening here. Yeah. I don't know. You look at it and think it's a cult, but then you get in and get brainwashed and no longer think it's a cult. Crazy concept. R Richard, you are an absolute deplorable human being. You're a crook. I don't know much about cults. Yeah, yeah, well. Did that sound cultish? <laughs> it definitely did. <laughs> okay. I don't know much about cults, but, <laughs> but certainly this is not. It's a business and where the company is doing everything in their power to try and keep you engaged. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Richard. I think you, we, we address those comments. They are all valid comments, but it's, it's, it's a, it's seeing it from a different approach. Yes. Okay. Imagine bro. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you to Nick. For them to say that those are comments from haters. Yeah. Anyone who tries to question my culture pyramid scheme is a hater. Wow. That was fun, man. There's so much, more content from his channel if it's still up uh, by the next time I stream tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll do, a, I'll do a poll in Discord. If you're not in the Discord, join. I just put the link in the chat. But maybe I'll do a poll tomorrow to see if we do, uh, to see what we do on stream tomorrow. I'm thinking it's been a while since I did a Ray Higdon, Jessica Higdon, ha, huh, uh, reaction video to their show. So maybe we'll do that. Um, yeah. Me when I get home from work to my own apartment. Wow, it's so cool to be here. <laughs> Literally. When you need a donor goal for private security, Marco. Scott is coming for you. I know, man. We need more. We need. Hey, listen. The truth of the matter is, no matter what the current situation or current setup of my life is, we need more bag. More bag needs to flow into this cult, and I'll tell you why. Security, guns, security, editors, vi more videos, faster, speed, uh, security. But y'all have been showing love tonight and on Wednesday, and I really, really appreciate it. Oh. Like that. This cult is everything to me. And, uh, you know, join the Discord, and I'll see you guys in there. And uh, we got to do more after-stream little after-parties in Discord as well. Uh, maybe I'll have to start streaming earlier to do that, or maybe on Fridays if I'm not streaming anymore, I'll just do Discord with you guys. But, yeah, I'll do a poll to see what we do uh, for, for tomorrow. But appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, y'all have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Marco. 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 All right, y'all. Hope you learned something today. Peace out. There are deaf paid assassins out there. So too. Security and Nickelback and Kiss and 50 Cent. Exactly. Can we get a fuck yeah to sign us out? Of course. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. All right, y'all. Peace out. Gift Mika membership and see you tomorrow. True. Peace.